Okay. So, uh, good morning everyone. Good morning, magandang umaga po sa mga uh, participants natin. My name po is JP Odya. And um, today we have uh, another special topic from the Philsci Hub Research University. And uh, it's titled Green Chemistry Principles and Initiatives. And today we are joined by Professor Maria Catrina Vasquez de Paz of Adamson University to deliver this, uh, this webinar. Okay, so magandang umaga po sa mga Zoom participants natin as well as um, YouTube participants. I hope we are uh, now live. Can you check? And uh, ayun po, Mar maraming maraming salamat po for uh, uh, being with us today. So uh, kind reminders lang po, uh, we would like to request everybody to uh, mute their phones, uh, their um, microphones and uh, uh, turn off their video uh, while the uh, uh, while the webinar is while the web webinar is ongoing, and uh, you can turn them on when you want to pose a question during the Q and A part. Okay, and uh, please no recording of the video because uh, you know, mampung full video I uh, uh, already posted automatically after the webinar. And the certificates of participation will be uh, issued to all participants uh, here in, on Zoom and also on YouTube. And uh, they will be the Google form link will be posted on the uh, chat box or the uh, live comments in YouTube. And uh, uh, to be able to receive your your certificates of participation, you have to be um, a subscriber of the official YouTube and uh, Facebook group. Of uh, Filipino Science Hub. Okay, so to uh, introduce our group to our new members, although uh, we, we are doing this every week, uh, I'd like to call on uh, Professor Dindi Voiles uh, to introduce uh, our group. Ma'am Dindi? Hello po, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. I'm here to uh, just give you a little bit of uh, background information about Filipino Science Hub. So it was uh, started by Dr. Jeff Lumkin, a Filipino scientist back in 2012. And our mission po natin is uh, to promote STEM education and the culture of research among students and teachers in the Philippines. But uh, since last year, Paul, it's been our audience's our participants have been expanding and uh, c coming from different places. So we're made of uh, volunteer Filipino scientists and uh, STEM educators, and and we're still growing po on leadership team namin. And um, ito po ang vision namin ano, uh, na expand po yung reach natin, like I said, sa Philippines and uh, around the world through these two major programs. So. Um, we have the Philsci Hub Ed and Philsci Hub Research. So, so Philsci Hub Ed, po, uh, our main goal is to strengthen our STEM educators po, by providing different trainings, seminars, and also um, allowing them to, um, to make instructional materials that um, we can promote uh, nationwide. And uh, JP will talk about the Filipino Science Hub Research uni University later. So, um, ang gusto po talaga natin as our vision is a technology and innovation driven Philippines. And we believe that this two, uh, this two programs will help us achieve that vision. And um, through that, nakita po natin that we will create new generation of Filipino STEM enthusiasts. So um, we work, um, continuously, po, every almost every day, po, to achieve that vision and mission, and we have um, so far, po, ang impact po natin you know, since May 2020. We we have conducted, we have actually have reached over 70,000 students and teachers around the world, po, through our web events. We've had, I think, 35 plus web events uh, that include teaching webinars, career guidance talks web lectures and tutorials, research webinars, and uh, STEM special topic like this one that we're having tonight. And we, we have shared over 86 hours of expertise 
and we have over uh, or around 17,000 live participants po. So nag average po kami mga 500 participants dito po sa Zoom and YouTube. So kung susumahin po natin, we can see that um, we've provided over 40,000 training hours and it's for free po. So um, we're, we're aiming the patuloy pong maging free itong uh, ating mga mga training materials para po sa ating mga guro at mga estudyante. Hindi lang po sa Pilipinas, kundi you know, sa iba't ibang panika po ng, ng mundo. So, uh, we're really excited po for the new things, uh, present and new things po coming up for Filipino Science Hub. So, just a little, a quick snapshot po of Phil Science Hub and program. Uh, like I said, we want to empower our STEM teachers, especially po ngayong pandemic. Um, so, uh, nakikita po natin yung pangangailangan ng maraming guru ngayon and um, through our through this platform we would like to to help our academic frontliners so ngayon po we have around 30,000 uh, FSH members and, and, and uh, thank you <laughs> and uh, through this program po um, nakikita po natin na within 30 years po we can impact over 27 million students through training and providing quality materials to our to our teachers in the Philippines and abroad. So um, actually later po siguro i announce natin uh, there are actually there are training po sessions for for our STEM teachers um na ipo provide po natin in the next few weeks. So yan po yung snapshot lang po ng uh, Hub Ed and uh, just stay tuned po for for additional uh, details po about our programs and I think uh, yeah it's it's time for JP to talk about Phil Science Hub Research University so JP mm -hmm. take it away thank you Ma'am Dindi mm -hmm. so uh, as uh, Ma'am Dindi uh, mentioned um, Phil Science Research University is the other arm of um, is the research arm of uh, Phil Science uh, of Filipino Science Hub and at Phil Sciab Research University, we deliver webinars uh, that focus on uh, scientific research and all of the and all of its different aspects. So, dito po, uh, we share um, some of the best practices uh, in in terms of carrying out a research project, and uh, we also share some of our own research experiences and some tips and advices. So, in fact, yung pong uh, Webinar natin today is part of uh, Phil Science Research University as a special topic. And uh, this is uh, apart from the mandatory courses that uh, Research University offers. Um, and it's uh, eight mandatory courses uh, starting from research ideation, literature review, and all the way up to poster and conference presentation. So right now, we are uh, already, uh, we're already finished with uh, the seventh um, mandatory course, which is thesis writing, which happened last week. And uh, yung pong poster and conference presentation webinar will be um, sometime in uh, July. So um, kindly watch out for that. And uh, yung pong full mechanics ng Phil Science Research University will be uh, sent to you by mail uh, along with your um, participation certificate for this webinar. So kindly uh, go over lang po yung... Uh, Yung mechanics, if you want to uh, take part uh, uh, in uh, Phil Science Research University para po uh, maka-obtain uh, po kayo ng um, completion certificate uh, if you complete all the eight mandatory courses. So uh, what you only need to do is uh, to watch all the recorded uh, courses and uh, get uh, individual certificates uh, for that. So uh, summarize na lang po yun dun sa... Um, email that will be sent to you after this webinar. Okay. So Phil Sayab is always present in all of its platforms, uh, mainly our um, website at www.philsciehub.com, uh, which contains all of our webinars, tutorials, modules, virtual labs, and uh, some other fe special features. And uh, on Facebook, we have uh, 32,000 followers already. And on uh, YouTube, 11,000 and counting, and we're even on uh, TikTok. So kindly follow us on all of our uh, social media handles and uh, stay updated 
yung po sa mga events natin. Okay, so today uh, we have a special topic about green chemistry principles and initiatives. And uh, uh, Professor Maria Katrina Vasquez de Paz of uh, the uh, Department of Chemistry of uh, the College of Sciences at Adamson University will deliver this uh, webinar. And to uh, uh, formally introduce our uh, speaker, uh, I would like to call on again uh, uh, Professor Dindi to introduce uh, Prof. Makat, as we fondly uh, call her. Thank you, JP. So it's my honor to introduce our speaker for tonight. She's a very friend of mine. We've known each other for over 20 years and um, really excited that uh, she, she said yes to our invitation for tonight. So Professor Maria Katrina Vasquez de Paz is uh, currently a faculty member in Adamson University and she obtained her master's in chemical innovation and regulation from Erasmus uh, joint master program by the University of Barcelona, University of uh, Bologna, and several other universities in the I'm probably butchering the pronunciations, but um, she graduated with honors. Um, and uh, she was she also she obtained her bachelor's degree from a uh, experience include uh, technical sales supervisor and specialist and she also was an instructor at University of the Philippines in the Institute of Chemistry. So, without further ado, I give the virtual floor over to Professor Maria Katrina. Take it away, Ms. Kat. Good morning, Hello, everyone. Kat. I'll just stop Hello. sharing for a moment. All right. Thanks for the intro, uh, Ma'am Dindi. Um, it's nice to see everyone here. No, so um, it's a, it's my pleasure not to um to find <laughs> to join the ano uh, the Phil Sci Hub community. Well, for the ano uh, um, it's since it's um naging uh, online. I mean, naging visible na kayo online. No? so I'm actually a fan of your ano uh, of your um webinars. No? so actually some of um many of your webinars actually is um nirerecommend ako pa sa uh, students ko. And also uh, I also use that as a supplement no to my ano to my topic. So kaya it's nakakakilig no <laughs> that uh, I'm now here. No, I'm one of your uh, I'm one of your resource um uh, persons. No, so um I'll uh I'll start. Sharing my uh, screen, no, wait lang. Yes, ma'am. All right, so. Ayan. Ayan so, po, nakikita na namin. Okay, kita na ba? Apo. All right. Um, Ewan ko lang sa YouTube kung kita na. Pero anyway. I'll, ayan. I'll quickly so, check. Ayan. So my topic when when um the feel I feels I have team and I know we're uh, we're talking about you know this uh webinar invitation so um I'm thinking ano ba yung i share ko na topic and well green chemistry has been close to my heart since since um time immemorial no so that's why I figured well this is a good topic to uh, to be uh, presented not to be introduced uh today so um so this will be the contents of my presentation so basically uh, i will share ano ba yung nagtulak sa akin no to ano uh, to be interested with green chemistry so basically my personal journey um with green chemistry and then also um we will define basically what green chemistry is and para saan ba yung green chemistry and the history of course of green chemistry what are the events no what are the policies that have um, transpired no that have led no to the ano to this um, program and then we also discuss the 12 principles of green chemistry so um for every principle, we will have some examples or case studies. And then um, next is the regulatory and voluntary endeavor. So some of us, parang bago pa lang sa pandinig natin yung chemistry, uh, green chemistry. Some For some naman parang um, may idea na sila, pero 
saan na ba siya nai-implement? Ano na ba yung mga initiatives um, para mapalaganap yung green chemistry? And as well, uh, the challenges no? um, in implementing no? and um, um, pagsasabuhay ng green chemistry as well as the future, uh, no? its future and yung future perspectives. So, uh, first, no? so let me... Um, um share my personal journey with um with green chemistry so um since undergrad years ko when i was studying as a bs chem student in um lb no so in a way medyo ano na ako medyo inclined na ako sa parang envy uh, pero sabi ko parang hindi hindi siya talaga envy hindi siya talaga envy environmental chemistry hindi siya totally environmental sciences no so parang um pero doon uh, since i suppose because of the environment no sa ano sa Los Baños no so talagang you're parang you're feeling you're one with nature no so kaya parang nakaka-inspire mag-aral ng ano ng um ng environmental sciences and envy chem and then um well the, some of these uh, photos no are well over the years no so um some of um like for example this one these are what, uh, with my colleagues in the ano uh, technical services department so i work as an rnd and then here naman i worked as a, as a sales person no so and dami and dami ko ring na ano natahak natahak uh, through 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 the years no nag teacher nag teacher ng chem nag uh, nag laboratory nag rnd tapos nag uh, nag sales then no and then I, i had my grad school no so in um in um in barcelona and in bologna no so where i had my I, where i had my um, masters um in chemical innovation regulation so this uh, this is me with my uh, with my um co-advisor no phd uh, my phd co-advisor martina well we are working no with our with our uh, graduate research and then here um here's me presenting my work no during one of our uh, one of our symposiums and this um this are basically my green chem mentors no so um all the things that i will be sharing today are actually the things that i have learned from these people no so um and dito yung advisor ko and also and dito yung mga uh, program coordinator no Pro- program coordinator ko which have actually um inspired me no to uh, to pursue um this um green chemistry and then Um, ito major recent lang no so i'm working with adamson university with the chemistry department and these are my students no my th- my research students thesis students so kahapon kaka depend lang nila no and also uh, their research topics basically also deals with ano uh, with um green chemistry so um yun nga as i mentioned earlier no so as a bs chem student and also yung mga um faculty sa ano sa Chemdep sa Institute of Chem so it essentially developed my interest in envy chem and kaya ang pinurso ko noon is yung groundwater quality analysis no so ano uh, testing testing ng hardness ng tubig no uh, microbial content also and also other minerals no and other ions present in ano um tubig poso no and then as an R&D chemist no so it's uh, a local company no so um is ang madalas na project ko doon is i have to develop and improve formulations of um industrial detergents and cleaners so ano nag yun, yun yung sinasabi ko nagtrabaho ako sa sabunan no <laughs> so um i um most of my projects there is i have to ano i have to develop or improve the formulations para maging eco friendly no so um use um like for example using uh more biodegradable um raw materials or surfactants no o kaya naman um yung mga less foamy no kasi apparently ma- uh, malaking issue din yung mga foamy yung yung pagiging foamy or pagiging mabula no ng mga sabon no especially if you you're dealing with industrial setting so um as a technical sales specialist naman so um from R&D to sales no it's um quite a big jump no pero um mas mag- maganda rin kasi actually na yun nga with sales na parang nai-share mo na kung ano yung tinuturo mo noon or ano yung natutunan mo pero syempre of course may kasamang selling factor yon no pero um as a, as a sales uh, person so i have actually advocated no to customers no to um the adoption or um use of um eco-friendly raw materials no so basically kung ano yung mga tinitimpla ko noon ng R&D pa ko binebenta ko na siya that time no so 
um, these, these ingredients that are used in detergents, um, water treatment chemicals, no? yung mga uh, pang, pantanggal ng hardness, no? and then also paints and coatings. No? So apparently with paint formulations now, they're also going into the um, eco-friendly route. No? So of course, they have to, uh, para ma masatisfy yun, they have to also use eco-friendly um, ingredients. And um, as a graduate student, no? so doon na ako formally na introduce to green chemistry no so when i when i was when i had my um, um graduate studies no doon ko na realize ah okay so everything that i've been doing for the past years um hindi lang siya but rather it's actually green chemistry no so and apart from that no um i've also learned about circular economy and also life cycle assessment and um part of my research actually is well, most of my research no, um, deals with the use of alternative solvents, no, specifically using sugars, as in asukal. No? So I've, um, I've used glucose, I've used uh, fructose, I've used sucrose, no? um, blended them and turned them into a solvent that I can use for uh, no, as solvent for uh, extraction, pagkuha ng mga biomolecules from um, kape, as in coffee grounds, as well as uh, the use of these solvents, these sugar solvents for um, various reactions, like for example, epoxidation reaction, which I will discuss in a bit. And now, um, after after my journey uh, with the uh, no, with my masters, no, so I joined Adamson, um, the ChemDep, and um, lat, uh, lately, no, so I've been uh, I've been handling uh, research students no undergraduate students so i've been their uh, i've been their advisor and most of their research are deal, uh, deals with biomass extraction as well as phytoremediation so basically the use of plants no para uh, para pang uh, address ng um, waste treatment no from um, surrounding specifically yung waste um, waste treatment ng soils so Let's define now what green chemistry is and para saan ba? Para saan ba yung green chemistry? So, it is sometimes referred to as sustainable chemistry. Um, and when we say green chemistry, it basically deals with the design of chemical products uh, and processes that reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. No, So basically, it's like R&D na magpuproduce ka ng mga... Um, um, chemicals, uh, chemical products, o kaya naman uh, processes, pero naka-keep in mind doon na yung process na yon or yung product na yon, it must be, or it must reduce or eliminate, you know, um, hazard um, hazards. And um, green chemistry is intentionally designed, no? So, kumbaga, it's quite rare, no? Na magkaroon ng parang serendipity with green chem. Kasi, you always, um, with green chemistry, you always start designing uh, products no with you know life cycle considerations parang isipin before mo paggawin yung produkto iniisip mo na paano ang magiging fate nito sa environment mabubulok ba to magdebiodegrade ba to uh, mako-convert ba to into something na less hazardous so kumbaga this is like designing with the end in mind so um, green chemistry also addresses the obvious and associated hazards pertaining to global issues such as climate change. No, so alam naman natin no um, kung ano yung nagkakos na uh, isa sa, uh, ilan sa mga causes ng climate change ngayon. It's because of the air pollutants. No, and then energy production, um, water and food supply, as well as environmental toxicants. No, so basically, ito yung mga um, issues na ina address. Um, pinip, um, pinipilit or sinusubukang i-address no ng green chemistry problematic na yung mundo natin no with all this uh, with all these issues no? so might as well no if we are going to produce um, products and processes so might as well um, pag-isipan natin no makakadagdag ba to sa climate change um, makakaapekto ba to sa water supply natin no makakadagdag ba to ng pollution or makakadagdag ba to ng mga um, toxicants sa environment saka sa health no, so yon. So one um one might ask no, and actually this was also my question before. Um, hindi ba pare pareho lang naman ng green chem, environmental chem, at saka waste treatment or yun tinatawag natin na environmental remediation. No, so pero apparently uh, may konting difference pa rin naman sila. No, all of them of, of course deals or um 
ang iniiwasan nila is ma-avoid yung hazard, ma-avoid yung pollution. Pero with Envichem, it actually deals with the impact of chemical pollutants on natural resources. So we have our natural resources, then we have our anthropogenic products, no? So anthropogenic meaning man-made, no? So ano ba yung epekto nitong mga produkto na to, nitong mga prosesong to sa kapaligiran natin, no? So that is basically environmental chemistry. And also with Envichem, it also deals with the um what you call this, yung study na rin, ng mismo ng environment natin, no? paano ba, nang, ano ba ang nangyayari sa atmosphere natin, no? uh, sa, ano, sa kalupaan, no? and also sa, uh, sa, tub sa mga tubig. Um, environmental remediation naman, or yung tinatawag natin na waste treatment or waste management, um, it deals naman with the clean up of pollution in the environment. So this um, environmental remediation or waste treatment, we acknowledge that the waste is there, the pollution is there. The question now is, paano natin sila lilinisin effectively? No? So that is Envirem. So it basically um, addresses no, the removal of hazardous materials from the environment. While Green Chem, Green Chem reduces pollution at its source. So as I've mentioned earlier, um, i-design mo pa lang, pag-iisipan mo na yung end-of-life scenario niya. No? So... Um, Si, doon pa lang sa simula, simula sa, uh, sa simula pa lang kino-conceive mo pa lang yung produkto or yung proseso ini inaalala mo na kung paano yung magiging ending niya no so basically um, green chemistry deals with the minimizing or eliminating the hazards of chemical feedstocks or raw materials the reagents the solvents as well as the products um, what are the goals no so um, first is the to prevent pollution at the molecular level no so Alam naman natin na yung mga alam na natin yung mga basura na nakikita natin no which is visible to the eye mga plastics no mga single use plastics um yung mga basta yung mga kalat basically pero who would have thought no that um things such as such as antibiotics for example no can also be pollute considered pollutants actually if you if you have um if you're going to read some um articles no about about um emerging pollutants karamihan doon ay mga antibiotics no so um with green chemistry it addresses you know pollution at the molecular level so ano yung mga molecules ano yung mga uh, ano yung mga chemical compounds no that can that will not pollute no our environment no and also won't be hazardous to ano to all forms of life and green chem one of the goals also is to adopt as a uh, philosophy that applies to all areas of chemistry and not just a single discipline of chem baka isipin iniisip kasi ng iba hindi ba yan parang biochem hindi ba yan parang analytical chem no um organic chem and physical chemistry no tas envi chem tas green chem um actually green chem is naka-integrate siya no you can have you can have an organic synthesis that is green nature green, that is green in nature no it's it's a green ano green organic synthesis pwede rin naman tayo magkaroon ng analytical methods no that is also green no like for um as long as it observes not um one or more of the principles of green chem so we can consider that as ano as a uh, green chemistry na din and then um green chemistry goals is one of the goals also is to apply innovative scientific solutions to real world and by problems no so of course um it would be nice no if um all the if all the synthesis that we do in the lab all the analysis that we do can be translated no to real world um problems no and um result in source reduction because it prevents the generation of pollution yun nga so bago bago ka pa magproduce ng pollution alalahanin mo na muna yung ano yung source no ito bang source na to um yung mga produkto ba galing dito madedegrade din ba agad or not um also another goal is to reduce the negative impacts of chemical products and processes on human health and the environment so we are not just dealing with the environment per se but also we have to consider yun nga the health no of all life forms no so hindi lang human well apart from humans of course no so we also have your animal health no and also yung ano na din, agri no uh, yung plant health and then um lessen and sometimes eliminate hazard from existing products and processes of course meron na tayo mga produkto na nandiyan na yung plastics no pero um ano ano yung pwede nating gawin no para yung mga alam natin na hindi uh, hindi degradable no is pwede pang ma-degrade kahit pa paano. 
And then um, design chemical products and processes to reduce their intrinsic hazards. Um, saan ba nagmula itong green chemistry na to? Actually, there are a lot of events, a, a lot of um, events that have transpired globally, you know, that have um, um, catalyzed you know, the, uh, no, the birth of um, green chemistry. One of the um isa sa mga pinaka nakakagimbal no na um chemical accident that happened no um was the Bhopal gas tragedy so it happened in Bhopal India um and it was uh, it happened mga 1984 so more than almost ano na almost four decades na um December pa so it happened mga December night of December 2 or December 3 and um the company involved is Union Carbide India Limited. So they are actually a, a pesticide manufacturer. If you are familiar with ano uh, with the insecticide 7, no so actually ito yung pantanggal ng ano pantanggal ng kuto sa mga uh, panabong na manok and also some pets no so um I, I can I can I can still see seven no sa ano sa Shopee. <laughs> no so um seven is a pesticide no and it's actually yung ang kanyang molecule is carbaryl. Um, in producing seven, it uses actually the methyl isocyanate no, as an intermediate. So before you produce carbaryl or before you produce seven, meron pang isang product before that and that is yung MIC or methyl isocyanate. So obviously, if you're producing a seven, you will also uh, produce a lot of MICs and you will also store a lot of MICs. Um, this is the molecule of MIC. And... What happened during the Bhopal gas tragedy is there's the leakage of about 40 metric tons, so 40 tonelada no, of MIC, no, ang tumagas mula sa planta, papunta dun sa paligid, no, sa communities around the, around the plant's vicinity. So actually this incident no, is a combination of a lot of um, tawag na to, lahat, several factors. No? So Kasi it happened in, in a time na yung tanke, yung storage tanks ng MIC ay more than 50% capacity kasi they, um, it's a rule for them no, that they, they won't have, they, they shouldn't um, stock MIC no, for every tanke, dapat 50% capacity lang. So dapat nasa 30, nasa 30, ano lang, nasa 30 tons lang dapat per tank. Ayan ang yari, meron, meron silang tanke na 40 tons. Tapos, um, nakashot nakashut down pa yung refrigeration refrigeration systems nila so obviously kapag mainit diba we uh, kapag mainit yung paligid no as well as yung storage tank so mas, there's a tendency to explode no and then another thing is mahina din yung water curtain no? so kung ano man yung pagsabog ano man yung um, apoy na ped or sparks na pwedeng ma-generate walang pang-apula no and even the the gas scrubber no was turned off naka-shutdown naka naka-shutdown din yung sanang scrubbers na mag uh, magde-detox no nung uh, whatever leak gases and then even the flare tower no which is supposed to burn off no yung mag uh, magsusunog doon sa um, emitted gas naka-shutdown din no so talagang it's a disaster waiting to happen and because of that tumagas no kasi you have you have um you have an over um tangkay na nasa overcapacity and everything else na pang apula nakapatay so kakalat talaga no yung um yung MIC and this is actually um the Bhopal plant now no um so apart from just MIC no ang dami pa ding mga chemicals or molecules na kumalat no sa community they have um chloroform they have the chloromethane hydrogen chloride and basta uh, mga ano mga methyl uh, alkyl amines no and also carbon dioxide so hindi lang MIC no and daming and dami ding gases which basically are in a way toxic no so kaya um talagang disaster no yun ang yare and because of that thousands of people have died due to acute and long term health effects gaano karami yung thousands no immediate na nangyari yon so night of december 2 or 3 basta as in habang tulog yung mga tao about 2000 have died initially no um nalanghap eh nalanghap nila yung gas so and tulog sila no so talagang um baka yun nga posibleng hindi na sila nagising after and, and with the long term health effects naman 
um, about 15 to 20,000 have died. No? So, yung iba, okay, na, na-survive nila yung gabing yun. Pero, you know, the, ano, the MIC, no, pumasok na sa katawan nila and it, it have caused, you know, um, long-term health effects such as um, um, pulmonary and cerebral edema, circulatory system collapse, kidney and liver degeneration, and even with the unborn, unborn children, no? So it caused um, peri and neonatal deaths. And for those um, children, no, who were, who were able to survive, they had birth defects naman. So, paano nangyari na andaling, nakapa, andaling makapasok ng MIC sa katawan natin? It is because MIC here is um, has a high affinity with glutathione. We naturally have glutathione in our body. no? So, it basically, it binded with glutathione and kaya madali siyang nakapasok sa katawan natin no so um thus causing this um long term health effects so that's one no kasi talagang ano siya um actually until now there are a lot of unsettled issues no with uh, with this bopal tragedy marami pa ring um yung mga victims no I, i i suppose the second generation no, of, of the victims are still lobbying no against you know yung the damages that was caused no by this incident no so kaya talagang ano din to um sa sa mundo ng uh, chemical industry no talagang isa siya sa case study no ng um wag tularan no or wag nang mauulit another um event well phenomenon that uh, that Um, led no, to or inspired you know uh, the promotion of green chemistry is the ozone depletion no so um, we know naman no the issue with ano with the ozone layer no so because of uh, because of the use of cfc or chlorofluorocarbons no so it actually caused um, holes or produced holes in our ozone layer no pero so far naman well if you have if you've been reading the news may mga nagsasabi na nagsasara naman na daw no so nah- nagihil na daw yung ozone layer natin and and it is because uh, at at this moment no CFCs are already banned no dapat ano pa siya uh, with the Kyoto with the Kyoto protocol and the Montreal po- protocol so dapat um, wala nang CFCs no at mo- at least dun sa mga developed uh, Um, first world countries no um cfcs paano ba sila nakakasira ng ozone layer no so we know naman ozone um ozone layer contains ozone here which is um composed of um three oxygens here ayan so when chlorofluorocarbons they are not actually de- biodegradable no so dito sa lupa walang walang makakaano walang makaka-breakdown sa kanya so it goes to the atmosphere and up there in the atmosphere it will be exposed to uv radiation and it pro- uh, it produces the chlorine radical and itong chlorine radical na to yung free, radi- free radical na tinatawag natin it will react with our ozone basically it will break down our ozone into molecular oxygen and chlorine monoxide and chlorine monoxide will also react with another um, oxygen, um, monatomic oxygen, to give us molecular oxygen and again, the chlorine radical. So it's a vicious cycle. No? So if you have, as long as you have this free chlorine here or the, uh, this um, uh, chlorine radical here at meron kang ozone molecule, ayan, tuloy-tuloy ang, ano, tuloy-tuloy ang pag-destroy ng ozone into molecular oxygen. No? So pero yun nga, with the, uh, with the with the banning no of the CFCs nabawasan na nabawasan na yung mga chlorine radical na pwedeng mag-react sa ozone uh, ozone sa ozone layer natin and also well in the US no so they had this pollution prevention act of 1990 no so um this uh this law basically Uh, mandates no to stop creating pollution in the first place or basically the source reduction na tinatawag natin and source reduction can be done by means of modifi- uh, modifying the equipment or technology um, modification of processes um, and procedures as well as modification and reformulation or redesign of uh, products and substitution of raw materials no so limbawa Um, palit tayo ng active ingredient that is more easily biodegrade that, that is more easily degraded than the other um, also improvements in housekeeping no so main, maintenance training and even inventory control no? so these are basically um, the um, aspects no that can be implemented no para talagang ma-address yung uh, pollution at um, at its source and itong 
nasa gitnang tatlong to. So, yung modification process, modification of products or redesign of products, as well as the substitution of raw materials are actually at tasks, basically, of chemists. No? So, chemists basically are the uh, designers no? of molecular structure. They are designers of transformation. So, kaya... Um, kasama talaga tayo dito sa ano dito sa pag-address ng um, pollution source reduction no and so dahil dahil nga doon um, nagsimula no na yung uh, movement ng green chemistry so it started basically as ano uh, parang isang um, hindi naman department but i mean parang isang office doon sa ano sa US EPA no sa pollution control um which na- which is named as alternative synthetic pathways research solicitation so parang is a um, a research program no that deals with this alternative synthetic um pathways no and, uh, alternative products and then um another another institution uh, which is NSF no um nag-establish din sila ng program which is named as the environmentally benign synthesis and processes program no so independent sila with uh, it, it, they started independently with um from uh, i mean independently from ano uh, from the US EPA pero eventually they have uh, they had this um memorandum of agreement no and so naging ano na siya naging US green chemistry program so basically talagang um US yung nag spearhead no and naging officially naging ano na siya parang isang department na siya under uh, under US EPA and anong ginagawa ng green chemistry program of course they are promoting ano they are promoting green chemistry by means of um this presidential green chemistry challenge awards which i will discuss later on as well as you know handling um green chemistry and engineering um conferences in other countries well they followed suit then no like for example in italy they had this inca consortium wherein they um parang grupo siya ng mga um scientists no that um yung focus na research nila are about green chemistry and then in Japan they have the GCSN or the Green and Sustainable Chemistry Network and then in the UK um well there's the Royal Society of Chemistry but since um um they they are already an organized um uh, group no so nag-establish naman sila ng uh, journal no which is the green chemistry journal and globally no so we have the GCI or the green chemistry institute which was spearheaded by the ACS American Chemical Society no so um GCI um gaano na siya kalawak globally no so meron na siyang iba't ibang chapters no in um northern uh, nor- um north america canada also in south america also in south africa australia china and also some countries no in the europe no are having um are having chapters of GCI so far dito sa Pilipinas eh ko lang no pero this was 2002 and wala pa tayong chapter wala pang GCI chapter dito sa Pilipinas i i, I do hope ngayon meron na or magkakaroon in the future so um what about the principles kasi sabi natin kanina we, um green chemistry well we had the goals no pero ano ba yung mga guiding principles para ma-achieve yung um green chemistry goals na yon so the 12 principles of green chemistry serves as the framework no for the design of new chemical products and processes um it was um introduced no by uh, Paul Anastas of the Yale University and uh, John Warner of Monash University actually you can search them on, uh, you can google them parang they have ano parang they have websites personal websites i suppose that uh, that is devoted then you know, for ano about um, green chemistry and medyo ma- medyo madaming alalahanin no kasi labindalawang principles ito eh no pero um they have this acronym which is called productively no which is um yun nga parang acrostics ba tawag doon so um or acronym no um for the uh, 12 principles so p stands for preventing waste r is the use or production of renewable materials o is omitting or omission of derivative uh, deriv- derivatization steps and then d degrade um the production of degradable chemical products u using safe synthetic methods c use catalysts no t 
uh, make sure that your environmental conditions no are uh, managed no so um, as much as possible you utilize ambient pressure and temperature in your synthesis or in your reaction um, in process monitoring v use of very few if uh, hindi kaya na hin wala, uh, auxiliary substances e which stands for the e factor which is basically uh, we have to maximize no the feed in product so basically Kung ano yung starting material natin, lahat ng yon makonvert into product. And then L, low toxicity for chemical products. And yeah, uh, Y stands for yes, it's safe. No, so isa isa hinaten. No, etong labindalawang principle yung ito. Principle one. Well, yung yung kanina pala by the way dito is ano na siya, in random order na no. Pero um, if you are going to follow no yung um, the principles no as stated sa ano sa uh, US EPA website or sa Green Chemistry website no so this ito yung order niya so the first principle is waste prevention it is better to prevent waste than to treat or clean up waste after it is formed o nga naman di ba sa halip na problemahin mo yung kalat alalahanin mo na muna na wag ka muna magproduce ng kalat no um what is considered a waste? So basically, any generated material that does not have a realized value o kaya naman lost or unutilized energy o kaya naman raw materials. No? So yung mga hindi nagagamit, no, hindi nagagamit na uh, materials, um, produkto na hindi naman wala tayong mahanap na pakinabang, they are considered waste. Um, less waste basically is a more efficient and more environmentally acceptable process. Um okay so ano ba yung so of course we uh, we are dealing with waste prevention and we also have to have metrics no ano ba yung paano ba natin masasabi na efficient nga or environmentally acceptable nga ang isang um proseso or produkto um familiar naman tayo dito no sa percent yield no so i suppose if you are teaching uh, stoichiometry alam mo na to no how to how to compute percent yield which is basically the actual uh, the, the ratio of the actual yield and the theoretical yield no um and then we also have this percent conversion no so basically you have to um subtract no the initial uh, the initial moles of your starting material then minus minus the remaining uh, moles of your starting material divided by the initial moles times 100 so just basically it basically shows us um ilan gaano karami no starting material natin ang na form into product no pero with green chemistry another metric no that is considered is the e factor or the environmental factor um and by factor or e factor or it also, it's also called as sheldon's e um is the ratio of all the molecular uh, all, um, sum of the molecular weights or the formula weights of all weights so basically anything na hindi kasama hindi desired product no um, side products no byproducts are also included no here and um, also solvents then divide it by the sum of the molecular weight of desired product no so um if if you are dealing with chemical equations, you also have to factor in yung coefficients. No? So the coefficient times the, mol, uh, times the molecular weight or the formula weight of that uh, waste number one no? and then waste number two over the, uh, no, the coefficient times the molecular weight or formula weight of the desired product. Or in some instances, no, if we, well, if we are dealing with industrial scale na noon, syempre, um to neto na lado na usapan natin or kilo um kilo kilo no so it can be determined also by getting the sum no of the uh, waste product so again including solvents divided by the mass or kilogram of the desired product ayan so basta pag sinabing green chemistry principle 1 ang ma-associate natin is the e factor um, kaya siya tinatawag na Sheldon's E because of its um, originator, um, Roger Sheldon, which is, uh, he was formerly with Shell. No? So parang naging project niya na meron kasi silang nagsaradong planta noon. Um, nagsaradong planta kasi hindi na um, hindi na sulit parang mag, um ang laki ng gastos nila with um with waste management no with waste treatment and so yun nga um um with uh, with that study no parang feasibility study they were able to come up with this uh, environmental factor um e factor basically tells us no that for every kilogram of the desired product 
this much waste will be produced. No? So basically, if we have a higher E factor, it means that mas marami tayo na po produce na, gen, uh, na, na waste no? by the reaction or the process. So ideally, no, ang, ang E dapat na ma-achieve for any reaction or process is zero. So it, it means zero waste. No? Pero well, that's the ideal. No? Um, how about in real life, no, sa iba't ibang um, chemical industries dito sa atin, kumusta naman yung kanilang e-factor? So, uh, we have the bulk chemicals. So, basically these are the ano, these are the commodity chemicals no that were produced in talagang uh, tons, no. Like for example, um refineries, no. So, and then fine chemicals. So, ito na yung mga um ito na yung mga uh, process chemicals. So, basically, yun yung mga ginagamit natin na raw ingredients, raw materials. And then, the pharma. Well, we know what pharma is. No? Mga ano, uh, manufacturers ng, ano, ng mga gamot. So, if we take, uh, if we pay attention no, to the ano, to the E-factor of each industry segment, E-factor ng bulk chemicals, medyo mababa. They are producing um, even less than one no, or as much as five kilograms waste for every kilogram product no so well we know naman diba the products of petroleum refineries and daming ano eh ha halos lahat ng halos lahat ng fractions may paggagamitan eh diba pwedeng asfalto pwedeng diesel pwedeng um gasolina no pwedeng kerosene and so on no well some even some of them can be converted into polymers no so maraming maraming um, maraming paggagamitan so basically um wala gaanong tapon no lahat may silbe fine chemicals on the other hand their um, e factor medyo mataas no so 5 to even more than 50 kilograms waste for every kilogram product pero what about pharmaceutical ang taas no so we have 20, uh, at least 25 kilograms of waste for every kilo ng produkto no so pwedeng produkto na active ingredient pa lang ito no so birin mo yun 25 kilos o kalahating kaban <laughs> at least kalahating kaban na ng um, waste no para lang sa isang uh, kilo, uh, kilogram ng let's say um, ibuprofen no uh, what more pa kung um, kung mas mabusisi pa yung production ng um, API or active pharmaceutical ingredient well it can go as much as 100 um, kilograms of waste for every kilogram product produced, no? Well, it's understandable naman, no? Kasi syempre, in inumin natin yung gamot, eh. Pang ano siya, uh, for, uh, we are after the therapeutic effect of that drug. So, of course, we have to ensure the safety, no, uh, of this um, of these pharmaceutical products. And yun nga, to ensure safety, they have to undergo several processes, no? So, para ma-refine yung, um, yung molecule, no? Um, Ma-ensure na yung iinomin natin is just you know the active ingredient no walan walang ibang contaminants present so pero yun nga as a consequence and dami ring waste na napoproduce no um case study no for uh n by factor no suppose we have or if we want to um oxidize isopropyl alcohol to acetone no so we can have major refresh natin yung organic chem natin so we can actually oxidize no by means of air oxidation so you have the isopropyl alcohol then you have oxygen um they will go on um oxidation to produce as acetone and also water o kaya naman pwede rin naman tayo mag-oxidize ng isopropyl alcohol to acetone using pcc which is um oxidation by pyridinium chlorochromate no so um we have here we have here again the ano, isopropyl alcohol and then we have the our pcc reagent and then it um it's it will produce it will give us uh, acetone and then also the ano um uh, pyridinium chloride and also chromic acid or chromous acid no so um we may think pareho naman yung pareho naman nagpo-produce ng ano to ng acetone pero if we are going to consider no the e factor sino kaya yung mas ano sino yung mas maganda yung e factor meaning sino yung less waste ang napo-produce no so again if we want to if we want to compute for the ano for the e factor e factor is basically the sum of the pangit na no sum of the um molar um, molecular weights ng mga weights waste no over the um the molecular weight of the desired product no so desired product natin ito 
no? So everything else will be considered as a waste. So dito for reaction one, we have two big, no, as our waste. And then here in reaction two, we have this um, pyridinium chloride as well as promos acid, no? So, well, these are the masses naman na, no? molecular weights of each um, um, species involved in um, each reaction. Okay, so... So yan, so binilugan ko na dito kung sino yung desired product, yung nakaberde, yung desired product, yung nakapula naman, yung waste, no? So if we are going to compute for the E of each reaction, no? So we have um, mass of waste over mass of desired product. So for reaction one, we have 18 coming from here sa water over 58.1, which is the mass of acetone. So we have an E value of 0.31, no? So medyo mababa, no? Di medyo mababa. Mababa na, no? Um, what about sa reaction 2? No? Um, with reaction 2, so dalawa yung uh, waste products natin. So we have um, uh, p um, pyridinium chloride, which is 115.6 plus 102 for chromic acid. Chromous acid divided by 58.1, we have 3.75. So di hamak naman na mas malaki yung E nito kasi dito. So it means that uh, for every kilogram of um for every kilogram of um acetone we are producing as much as 3.75 kilograms of these waste while for um while for reaction 1 for every kilogram of um acetone we are just producing about 0.31 uh, kilograms of water and obviously the lower the e the better um the better the reaction or i mean the more green the greener the reaction is. So reaction one has the better E factor. So it's considered greener than reaction two. Um, another principle no, is atom economy. No? So for atom economy, uh, well, with principle one, we are dealing with the waste. Ayaw natin makaproduce ng maraming waste. With atom economy, gusto naman natin masulit yung mga starting materials natin. Um, synthetic methods should be designed to maximize the incorporation of all materials used in the process into the final products. Gusto natin lahat ng reactants natin maging or makonvert sila into um, products. No? Pero one might ask, eh, may stoic tayo, di ba? May limiting yung excess reagent. Well, we will tackle that later on. So, but first, um, it na-introduce na yung atom economy or AE. So, this is just the concept of maximizing the use of raw material so that the final product contains the maximum number of atoms from the reactant. So, yun nga. So, all atoms introduced as a reactant will be converted into um, product. And then, it basically, uh, uh, well, atom economy states that how much no, of what you put into the reaction pot ends up in the product. No? Gaano karami yung nakakonvert. And definitely, an ideal reaction will have um, or will in or incorporate all the atoms of the reactants. 100% conversion, kumbaga. And atom economy no, can be um, calculated no, by means of... Um, Dividing the molecular weight of the desired product over the sum of the molecular weights of the reactant. So, multiply din natin sila dun sa mga uh, kanya kanya mga coefficients dun sa ano, sa balanced chemical equation. And atom economy can be um, expressed as percent, no? 100, uh, 0 to 100 percent, o kaya naman um, um, 0 to 1, no? So of course the ideal ano the ideal value no, for atom economy is 1 no so meaning lahat ng ano lahat ng reactants natin or isa lang no or when you get the ratio no of the desired product and the reactants the result will be 1 so ideal no mas malapit sa 1 di mas okay so balikan uli natin no si uh, oxidation of isopropyl alcohol to acetone no so the same reaction no so Kanina, nasabi natin, reaction 1 has a better E factor kasi mas konti yung waste na produce niya. Pero what about um, in terms of atom economy? Sino yung mas sulit na reaction? No? Si reaction 1 ba o si reaction 2? No? So again, the side product uli natin is the acetone. And this time, with atom economy, ang titingnan naman, na, titing na naman natin ay yung mga nasa left side ng equation. No? So yung mga reactants natin. So if we are going to calculate this, uh, 
Okay. Um, ayan. So, if we have, if we have, if we're going to calculate, so, ito uli. So, ang binilugan ko naman na pula dito ay yung uh, reactants natin. And, if you're going to compete for the AE, so, desired product, siya yung nasa, uh, siya yung nasa numerator. And then, Uh, masses of the reactants are at the ano at the denominator naman so 60.1 times uh, well plus the half kasi we have an uh, we have um coefficient here times 32 no so we uh, we have an ae of 0.76 for reaction 1 while for reaction 2 naman 0.21, no? So, we have 58.1 divided by 60.1, okay? And also, um, yung mass ng PCC, which is 20, uh, 215.6. So, 0.76 versus 0.21. So, sino uli ang mas um, sulit, no? So, kanina, pababaan, no? With, uh, with the E factor or with the E, the lower, the better. Dito naman, mas malapit sa 1, the better, no? So, therefore, the reaction... Also, reaction 1 has a better atom economy compared to reaction 2. Well, as you can see naman, no, so we have less less material. Uh, well, pareho lang naman, two, ano, two reactants. No? Pero um, we have oxygen here and magkocombine din naman siya with, um, with it will react no? um, with um, isopropyl alcohol to give us this product. No? Um, If we are going to take a look also with the addition and substitution reactions, no? so perhaps you have encountered these reactions in your org chem, organic chem, I'm not sure if it's one or two. No? Um, we have the diels alder addition and um, the nucleophilic substitution. No? So um, reaction one is an addition reaction. No? So if we are going to compute um, the AE or the ato uh, atom economy for uh, diels alder reaction, Oh, perfect. No, so one. So we have um we have the molar mass of um cyclohexene, and then we have the ano uh, divided by the um uh, some of the molar masses of our starting materials of our alkenes and dienes. So we get a uh, one. No, pero pag substitution naman. No, so for uh, suppose we have this um and then we have um we sub uh, we introduce a uh, methoxy group no in this um in this compound no in this al uh, uh, substituted benzene no and if we are going to compute kasi ito lang yung desired product natin obviously no so yung uh, uh, this one divided by the starting materials no so we have 0.33 so essentially addition reactions ano have better atom economy kasi nga we, well from the name itself addition reaction so they just combine so basically all all the reactants no will um will be a part no of the um product no so kaya mataas yung kaniyang um atom economy substitute substitution kasi may, may ano ka pa may tapon ka pa yung living group mo principle three less hazardous chemical synthesis no so kanina we're focusing on the ano um the metrics no of um chemical reaction so what about yung ano na entire process na synthesis of course um whenever practicable synthetic methodologies should be designed to use and generate substances that pose little or no toxicity to human health and environment no so um paano ba natin masasabi na yung isang chemical synthesis ay green ay less hazardous so it uses basically it uses reagents and auxiliaries um that generates pro and also generates products that have little to no toxicities actually pwede rin naman na um pwede rin naman na hindi ka nagagamit ng auxiliaries no pero well there are instances na hindi pa rin talaga kaya you will still need auxiliaries pero make sure that they are safe no um ang naisip kong example dito is the enzyme catalyzed epoxidation and bayer villiger um, oxidation. Okay. So, epoxides, well, if, you, if you're thinking about yung mga epoxy na pandikit or epoxy na pintura, yes, that's ano, that, ayun actually yung um, produkto nitong mga um, um, epoxides na produced from these reactions. And then Bayer Villiger, it produces lactones, no, which are uh, starting materials or intermediates no, for the pharma pharmaceutical industries. So 
these uh, materials no the epoxides and ano uh, and lactones no and ketones are conventionally they're produced by means of the Prilesyajev oxidation, epoxidation, and bayer villiger oxidation. And these two reactions utilize peroxycarboxylic acids, or yung tinatawag natin na per acids, such as MCPBA, metachloroperbenzoic acid. So it's a powerful oxidizing agent. No? And talaga namang maganda. Maganda siyang oxidizing agent. No? So this is actually the general um, um, reaction no? for, uh, no, for the Prilesyajev the oxidation reaction and the bayer villiger oxidation no so we are both uses peroxycarboxylic acid peroxycarboxylic acid or such as mcpba they are produced um well they are sold commercially they can be um pwedeng if you are going to do these reactions you can use yung commercially uh, commercially bought na um mcpba no so um para para talagang mabilis yung reaction mo and then the thing with uh, the thing with these two uh, reactions that uses per uh, per acids no um yes they are powerful pero peroxycarboxylic acids or per acids are also irritants and are considered health hazards so if you if you google no the uh, the msds of um um of a, of a per acid such as mcpba no so makita mo na ang ang signal ano niya dito mga ang mga symbols niya dito is toxic, corrosive, uh, flammable, no? So even the require even the required storage and handling conditions are strict, no? So hindi bas hindi ka, hindi ka basta basta dapat ano gumamit ng uh, MCPBA, no? Or per acids in general, no? So well, we can say no that that this uh this epoxidation and bayer villiger oxidation are hazardous in um um, kundi ka mag-iingat, nako. <laughs> Pero, what about if, um, this is actually an opportunity, no? Para, pwede natin gawing green yung synthesis na ito, no? Kasi, para maiwasan na natin yung pag, uh, paggamit or pag-store pa lang, no? Nang, nitong mga per acids na to. So, one of the um, considered greener synthetic routes for this would be the use of enzymes as catalysts. No, for this um, epoxidation and bayer villiger oxidation. Uh, actually, this is part of my research no, on sa, ano, um, during my graduate school. So, an alternative no, is the use of enzymes, such as lipases. No? So, maraming klase ng lipases no, in terms of brands. No? So, when, when I was doing this study, I, uh, we have used Novozyme uh, 435. No? So, it still produces per acids. No? Nagpo-produce pa rin siya ng per carboxylic acid, pero it is produced in C2. No? So, meaning, you don't have to worry about the storage and the handling kasi yung per acids, ipoproduce mo na lang kapag gagawin mo na yung reaction. No? So, what, what's hap uh, what happens here is that first, you have your enzyme, and then you have your agua oxinada, hydrogen peroxide. Well, at, at, uh, at least no, yung peroxide, hydrogen peroxide is mas madali siyang i-handle no, kumpara sa MCPBA. No? So you have your lipase, you have your uh, uh, peroxide, and you also have your carboxylic acid. No? Um, when these three substances are in your reaction pot, you are actually producing the per carboxylic acid or the per acid. No, so it the novo uh, the novozyme or the enzyme will um catalyze no the um conversion of your carboxylic acid to per acid and now since you have the per acid you just introduce your alkene no or your ketone para magproceed sa epoxidation o kaya naman sa BV oxidation no so way safe no way, way safer compared to ano compared to um handling mcpba or any um strong um uh, per carboxylic acids yet that's yun nga controlled lang yung ano controlled lang yung quantities no na uh, mapo-produce mo ng um per acid so fourth principle is designing safer chemicals so um chemical products should be designed to preserve efficacy of the function while reducing toxicity no so um an example no would be yung spinosad spinosad is a mixture of um different active ingredients no and it is branded as entrust no and it's developed by the dow agrosciences which is now corteva 
um, Corteva Agro Sciences. So it's actually an awardee, no, of um, um, PGCC, no, so a presidential um, Green Chemistry Challenge Award. So they uh, they won in uh, 1999 under the category of designing greener chemicals. So Spinosad, sabi ko kanina, it's a mixture of different uh, molecules. So, dalawa sila. So, this one, which is spinosine A and spinosine uh, D, if I'm not mistaken. Um, para saan ginagamit si spinosad or si entrots, entrust? So, it is used to control or insect control of um, larvae. No? So, larvae of worms and caterpillars, leaf miners, and also fire ants. No? Um... Insecticides, pesticides in general, alam naman natin no, yung um, issue niya with toxicity. Well, kailangan, ano siya, uh, dahil kailangan niya maging toxic na sa target, uh, sa target um, organisms niya. No? So, and actually, the development of insecticide active ingredients have come a long way. Kasi if we are going back no, sa mga old school na ano, uh, insecticide active ingredients, um, ang laking issue sa kanila ng uh, degradability no Ma many of them are not uh, biodegradable no so imagine mo um baka patay na yung halaman i mean tumanda na yung halaman andun pa rin yung insecticide active ingredient no so um hindi siya na hindi siya madaling nabubulok no um and the older ano the older generations no of um insecticide active ingredients are highly chlorinated no actually they have this so-called dirty dozen. I, I've learned this from my, uh, from my uh, thesis advisor during my graduate school. They have this so-called dirty dozen. All of them are organochlorine um, pesticides. No? So, well, uh, they are now banned, hopefully. No? Hindi, wala na gumagamit nito sa Pilipinas. No? An example of which is dieldrin. No? So, ma, ano na, ma, uh, malayo na rin ang tinakbo no? ng development ng insecticide active ingredients. Um, from highly chlorinated ones, ayan, meron na tayong uh, konti na lang sila. No? And also, we are introducing various functional groups, no? which in a way um, enhances no? the uh, degradation or degradability of these um, um, molecules. No? Like for example, now we have cypermetrine. So yung mga household insect killers natin, bygone raid, they contain this. No? So, ano na, um, nag-evolve na kahit paano, no? Pero marami pa rin, no, sa mga insecticide active ingredients. Oo, oh, 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 biodegradable na, pero they're still toxic to non-target organisms, no? Like for example, carbaril, no? So, yung seven na na, na introduced natin kanina. Well, um carbaril is an ACE inhibitor, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor for the ano, for the insects of course. Pero of course, if it accumulates, it was also toxic no to uh, to humans who will be exposed no kung halimbawa may over accumulation nitong carbaril pati yung ACE in, pati yung mga ano natin yung ACE receptors natin maapektuhan din and not just that even the melat uh, melatonin receptors no are uh, will be affected no so hindi lang insect no ang ang target no so in a way in terms of selectivity um medyo ano pa rin mababa pa din no pero with uh, spinosads, no? Um, spinosads, which are mixtures of spinosins A and D, they were able to exhibit selective neurotoxic activity against the insects. Specifically, dun sa mga nabanggit ko kaninang insect, yung mga larvae, uh, larvae ng worms, caterpillars, fire ants, no? And saan galing itong spinosads? Um, they are actually isolated from soil samples. And they're actually byproducts of microorganism called Saccharo, uh, Saccharopolispora spinosa. No? Kasi before ang mga insecticide active ingredients natin, talagang they are, ano, they are um, designed from the lab. Basta, um, kumbaga, talaga synthesized siya. But with, um, with spinosads, in a way, they come from, ano, um, they are byproducts of a microorganism. So in a way, we can say it's natural. No? And at the same time, selective. No? So, if um, selective yung target, uh, I mean, selective siya sa, nakafocus lang siya sa target niya. So, it basically, it is basically safer, no, for non-target organisms. Principle five, safer solvents and auxiliaries. When we say auxiliary, this includes solvents, separation agents, drying agents, so yung mga sodium sulfate natin pang dry, no, so they are considered uh, auxiliary. Um, 
they should be made unnecessary whenever possible lang naman. So, syempre, kung, kung kailangan talaga ng drying agent, di gagamit tayo ng drying agent. No? Pero, um, pero kung, um, if we have the option no, that um, to use a safer, uh, safer alternative, then why not? No? So, kung gagamit tayo, it should be innocuous and safe. No? Um, a case study that uh, I can think of here is the designer solvents. Um, which are ionic liquids and deep eutectic solvents. No? So, well, this also this is also part of my graduate uh, graduate research. No, no? so um, I prepared uh, deep eutectic solvents and uh, yung sinasabi ko kanina during the introduction na mga um, solvents or reaction media from sugars. These are actually deep eutectic solvents. Okay, so well. We know naman the, ano, the solvents that we um, used, no? conventional solvents, yung mga uh, the chloromethane, the, the chlorinated solvents, the chloroform, no? then we also have hexane, um, mga hydrocarbons, no? then we also have acetonitrile, no? and so on. Um, also the alcohols, no? um, they have, um, especially the chlorinated ones, no? they have long withstanding issues in terms of toxicity, poor degradation, persistence, persistence, Basically, it's the opposite of degradation. If it's not, degra it's not degrading, it's de therefore, it is persisting in the environment. And of course, flammability. Diba? Kapag sinabi natin solvent, ang ina-associate natin ay madaling sumabog. No? We have to handle it carefully. We have to wear PPEs, no? especially if we're, dealing, uh, if we're handling large um, quantities no? um, ng solvents. Um, so yun, yun yung ano yun yung mga kadalasan nating issue actually even with alcohol alcohol um wala naman tayo halos problema sa degradation pero you know uh, volatility and at the same time uh, at the same time um yun nga yung flammability niya so um designer solvents no such as ionic liquids and des deep eutectic solvents um are perceived to address these issues kasi una um these designer solvents are chemically inert with water no so therefore hindi issue sa kanila yung may uh, yung moist uh, exposure to moisture during storage so madali silang is uh, store and then properties are customizable so basically these um, ionic liquids and this dipyotectic solvents they are composed of several um, molecules or several compounds no and you can actually tailor fit you can customize the let's say the viscosity the vapor pressure no and other properties by changing no the components or kaya naman the proportions or the uh, the amounts or quantities of the components no thus the term designer no so kaya siya tinawag na designer solvent kasi customizable siya and importantly they are non volatile no so hindi natin issue yung um nagi emit ng uh, VOCs no kasi they are medyo kasi malalaking molecule sila no pero well they are liquid no so they're also non volatile no Th these are examples no these are examples no of um uh mixtures no of um ionic liquids and this one is um a des no this one is what we call as the beamim if you have if you're if you're going to look for literature about ionic liquids isa sa pinakakilala no na uh, pinaka commonly used na ionic liquids ay yung beamim and then this is an ionic liquid and this one naman on the other hand is a deep eutectic solvents deep eutectic solvents specifically one that consists of choline chloride and urea no so uh, when they uh, when they are mixed together no they, um, they produces this eutectic mixture no um and then um what is produced is ano is a is a liquid no uh, eutectic uh, eutectic mix eutectic mixture which is a liquid at ambient temperatures no so yun yung um yun yung um solvents na pinaga um pinag-aaralan pinag-aaralan ngayon or yung um it um marami, malaki yung attention sa kanya no when it comes uh, in green chemistry studies and how well they are um studied no actually there are a lot of um researches no that you that use these designer solvents, no, and some of them have used for various applications, such as biodiesel production, no, and okay, naman um, phenolic compound extraction, no, so phenolic compounds. These are biomolecules from plants, no, uh, plant sources, no, some food sources, no, and phenolic compounds are very good antioxidants, 
no and para ma-isolate yon from plant samples plant sources um they're exploring the use of ionic liquids and um this um sixth principle is design for energy efficiency no so Siyempre, if we are dealing with chemical processes, we are dealing with chemical reactions, hindi lang tayo dapat nakatutok sa reactants, sa auxiliaries, sa produkto. We also have to consider gaano ka-efficient yung energy na uh, gagamitin natin for this reaction or for this process. No? So energy requirements of chemical processes should be recognized for their environmental and economic impacts. And, and it should be, they should be minimized. No? So the better... Um, in green chemistry mas yun nga mas preferred nila na um kung pwede na yung reactions mo or processes mo you will just perform it in ambient temperature and pressure no so hindi ka kasi if you are going to conduct reactions at high temperatures of course you have to use a lot of fuel no you have to you have to use um um a lot of energy no so kumbaga energy demand energy demanding yung process mo ayo ayo natin noon sa ano sa green chemistry no so hangga't maari sana ambient conditions um and how can we achieve this una we can achieve this by reducing the energy barrier of a chemical reaction or choosing appropriate reactants so that room temperature trans, uh, the transformations can be done at ambient um, conditions or ambient temperatures. No? Um, how do we reduce the energy barrier or how do we reduce the activation energy? Diba? From our from our gen chem, we should use catalysts. No? Diba? Para pababa, if we are going to if we are going to visualize again the energy diagram, diba? mataas kadalasan yung activation energy. Para mapababa yun, we have to uh, provide an alternative reaction pathway, which is uh, which utilizes ano, um, catalysts. No? So, ano, ano ba yung catalyst? No, we can have metal catalyst, inorganic uh, catalyst, then we can also have um, enzymes. No? So, so I'm go, I'll go back again to the, um, yung isa sa case study ko kanina, which is yung enzyme catalyzed oxidations. No? So, um, when I was doing these reactions uh, during my research, no, um, hindi ako umaakyat sa yung temperature na ginagamit ko noon, hindi ako tumataas sa 50 degrees Celsius. No? So, um, kadalasan mababa lang. I maintain at mga 30, ganun, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. Pero hindi tayo nagde-demand ng, ano, hindi tayo gagamit ng um, uh, energy para ma-reach yung, let's say, 100 degrees Celsius. No? So, lang ganun. So, temperature uh, ambient conditions yung ginagamit natin and at the same time um we also have to consider alternative energy sources or alternative um power no so um familiar naman na tayo dito no so uh, while marami pa rin ang gumagamit up uh, globally marami pa rin ang nagre sa fossil fuels but of course um inaaral na din natin ngayon or well ginagamit na din no yung solar power wind power meron pa nga tidal power no so basically they rely on the ano um the power generated by ano by the tides no pag nag high tide nag low tide no so those things no so these are two considerations no in ensuring that the reactions no or the chemical processes that we uh, do no are energy efficient or mindful of energy efficiency either we reduce the energy barrier we do the uh, we do the uh, transformations at ambient conditions or we also use alternative energy sources. Um, seven, principle seven, use of renewable feedstocks. No? So a raw material or a feedstock should be renewable rather than depleting whenever technically and economically practicable. No? So while well, I have um, I have two examples here, two cases here. First one are the biopolymers. I suppose nakikita naman na natin to no sa food packaging, sa mga plastic bags no. Meron silang may, may iba na may label na kasi daw they are made of biopolymer o kaya naman they are biodegradable no o kaya daw also degradable no but I'm not sure no kung gaano ka valid yung claim nila no pero the thing is marami na sa mga plastic products ngayon are made from bio-based products no like um like for example this one this food trays or food packagings they're typically made of PHA or polyhydroxyalkanoates no tapos um this one is yung ginagamit sa 3D printing. Um, they use they use ng mga spools of um, 
um, threads that um, made of PLA or polylactic acid. No, so um, also some ano, um, disposable utensils, no, uh, plastic plates, plastic spoons and forks. No, some of them no are also made from PLA. So dati kasi it's either PE lang, polyethylene, polypropylene. No, but now we have PLAs, we have PHAs. And the thing about this PLAs and PHAs, they are obtained um, from plant-based material. No, so um, basically biomass. No, so um, especially in Western countries, no, ang ang source nila nitong um, or starting material nila ay yung corn. No, then they also have sugar cane. Then they also have yung mga um, root crops such as cassava as well as legumes. Because well, there are also perhaps if you are going to read further about biopolymers, you you might also encounter yung tinatawag na ano na modified starch. No, so um starch uh, starch based polymers. No, so those things. No, so um they are um these biomass no will be processed no by um introducing um lactic acid. Uh, well. Um, to produce lactic acid, ethanol, and then they will be, ano, uh, they will be uh, polymerized, no, to give us yung PHA and PLA, and then they will be uh, uh, formed, no, into kung ano yung product na um, design sa kanila. Well, um, I cannot vouch, no, on the, ano, uh, on the biodegradability, no, kasi well, medyo bago pa rin naman ang technology na, uh, I mean, bago pa rin yung PLA and PHAs, no, so hindi pa I suppose hindi pa rin ganun katagal, hindi pa rin um hindi pa rin ganun kahaba yung panahon para ma-observe natin completely yung kanyang um decomposition process no or the degradation process. But in a way that's promising din no kasi we first thing is um yung mga plastics natin hindi na lang tayo nagre-realize sa ano, hindi na lang tayo nagre-realize sa mga um yung conventional materials no but we can also have plastics, polymers that can be made or um made from Um, or source no from plant based materials no lumalaki ang populasyon ng mundo so therefore mas maraming consumers mas maraming uh, mas maraming gagamit ng mga kung ano-anong bagay no so kaya talagang magpo-produce at magpo-produce pa rin tayo ng mga um, gamit magpo-produce pa rin tayo um, magpo we have to produce um, food no to uh, to sustain the population and of course with comes with food comes yung packaging no? so we also have to be innovative and um Um, come up no with packaging or other materials that can be um, made from renewable feedstocks such as plant parts or plant uh, plant samples or plant materials another example no of this um, um principle seven is yung tinatawag na biorefinery no so um isa sa mga na encounter ko before no is yung tinatawag nila na algal bio uh, biorefinery algal as in algae no this is um extensively studied na rin in some parts of the world no well this one for example itong itong nasa illustration ko this was if i'm not mistaken this is based in hawaii no so they are cultivating algae no so yung al uh, algae na para sa atin lumot lang yan no pero apparently ang daming pag pwedeng paggamitan ng algae no so they cultivate algae They grow, uh, they grow them. They harvest the algae. Then they, ano, they fractionate, meaning they have to process the algae. Because the mga uh, products ng algae, they can be used as ingredients for biofuels. They can be used for personal care and pharma products. They can be used also for um, aquaculture, animal feeds, and also health. No, and um, human and animal health. Um, if you have heard about astaxanthin, perhaps. Naririnig niyo to kasi yung commercial sa it's a skincare product no that claims to have uh, that to contain astaxanthin um astaxanthin is actually obtained from algae no so kala natin ano no kala natin galing uh, kung saan synthesized siya in the lab but it can be pero we can actually extract astaxanthin from algae no so kaya maraming ano maraming um Uh, products actually yung pwedeng ma-derive no from um algae so kaya many um marami na extensive studies no about um use of algae no for biorefinery products kasi pwede siyang maging uh, yung mga algae uh, algae algae oils for example they can be further converted into chemical feedstocks 
no that can be used as starting materials no for other um, consumer products so principle 8 reduce derivatives um use of blocking groups protection deprotection as well as temporary modification of physical chemical processes should be minimized or kung pwede avoid kung pwede lang naman no um if we're go if we're going back to ano to our organic chemistry no so ano ba yung protection deprotection step so usually this is the use of yung mga um uh, protection groups halimbawa if we have several functional groups no in our starting material and ang gusto lang nating i-target isa lang no so we have to use mga um uh, protection reagents no like for example this one no so we are going to uh, we are going to reduce this carbonyl group no we have to uh, to produce diol so ang gagawin natin kasi reactive din ito no so iba-block muna natin to or we use we introduce uh, we introduce a base no to para hindi muna to maging reactive no it, um and then afterwards we introduce the um green yard reagent and then afterwards we hydrolyze it para ma convert back uli ito into OH no so in in essence na convert natin itong functional group na to and at the same time hindi nat hindi ito nagreact no but the thing with um the thing with um derivatization no so um ang dami nating kailangan gamitin na reagent no so several protection steps for just one desired transformation kasi you have to protect no you have to kailangan mong uh, kailangan mong i-block yung functional group na yon tapos habang um, pag naka-block na yon saka ka mag-i-introduce ng reagent na uh, no, isang reagent tapos afterwards pag oh, pag converted na yung isang functional group tanggalin mo na yung protection ng isa pang functional group no so you have to introduce another process you have to introduce another uh, reagent so ang daming ang daming mga reagents ang daming steps no um na pagdadaanan and yun nga isa nga sa sa principles principle 1 prevent waste no eh this protection uh, protection uh, protecting groups and um the protecting groups um hindi naman yan lahat pwedeng reusable no so um and uh, well in some reactions talaga hindi kailangan pa rin no ng, ng uh, derivatization or protection so um in polaroid polaroid as yes, in the polaroid uh, those that produce polaroid films no so they have come up with this um, technology called non covalent derivatization um kasi with um with the protection uh, protection steps diba so talaga magpo-form sila ng covalent bonds with the ano with the um compounds no starting material so dito um instead of relying relying on covalent protection no specifically of hydroquinone so hydroquinone is um one of the reagents used para ma-develop yung uh, polaroid film no so para maging picture siya so um hydroquinone par um kasi part of the developing process is slow release ng hydroquinone and um one of um before it used to be they protect hydroquinone no para maging slow release they have to do covalent protection but with this uh, technology no they are able to um protect the oh groups of um hydroquinone this uh well this one is hydroquinone no um they're protected by means of h bonding no between um hydroquinone the oh group of the hydroquinone and um yung um tawag nito yung carbonyl group no amide group ng um BSN and dial, uh, dialkyl terephthalamide um so they for this one ito yung mga hydrogen uh, H bonding niya so therefore um hindi 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 free totally yung OH groups ng ano ng ng hydroquinone so um and at the same time hindi although blocked siya or protected siya um tawag nito Prote protected yung ano protected yung OH groups ng hydroquinone so therefore it won't be susceptible to ano to oxidation and further reactions pero the thing with uh, with this ano with this reagent the bis uh, bis n and dialkyl terephthalamide so hindi siya covalently bonded so therefore it is easier to remove no kung mas madali siyang i-remove so therefore you won't have to use less um reagents no and also you have to uh, you have to use less energy so dito hindi hindi natin masasabi na talagang 
kinansel niya yung derivatization. No, gumamit pa rin siya, nag-derivatize nag, uh, pa rin siya. Pero the thing is, hindi uh, dahil um, weak lang yung interactions between the protecting group and the ano and the um, hydroquinone. So less energy intensive and also less um, less steps involved. So there's less din yung nagamit. And nine is catalyst. No? So, um, catalytic reagents as selective as possible are superior compared to stoichiometric reagents. Um, what I found here is, um, as a good case study, is yung ibuprofen that is produced by BHC, which is now part of um, BSF chemicals. Well, we know ibuprofen, alaksan. No? Um, how is it synthesized? So, we... Before, no, the um the conventional process of uh, producing ibuprofen, it uses an excess of aluminum uh, aluminum trichloride. No, so we, we know naman the concept. No, we have a limiting reagent and we have an excess reagent. No, so um in this case, no, an limit ang excess reagent nila is yung aluminum trichloride as well as um you uh, anhydride. So with um since we have excess reagent, we are using excess reagent. So definitely later on. Ayun nga, excess siya, sobra siya. So we are producing actually waste no, in the form of our excess reagent. Um, another thing with, uh, no, with, uh, with this um, conventional way of uh, producing ibuprofen is you are, um, it involves several steps, five steps generally. And overall atom efficiency is at 40%, so 0.4. No? So medyo mababa. Um, a green route, uh, a green route no, for the production of ibuprofen Instead of using excess aluminum trichloride, they use hydrofluoric acid. No, so basically it's acid catalyzed. Uh, it's a acid catalyzed reaction. And um, konti, mas konte yung ginamit nila na HF na hydrofluoric acid. So less um, less resources then yung nagamit. And the same thing, it only involves two steps. No, and both uses catalysts. No, so um, it still ends up with the same uh, molecule. It still ends up with ibuprofen. But this green uh, greener route, the overall atom efficiency is 77%. So, mas dihamak na mas mataas. No? So, this just shows us na 77% of our starting materials here um, are converted to product. No? Unlike the sa una, no? ang dami na nga natin ginamit na aluminum, aluminum trichloride, pero 40% lang yung ano natin, yung na-produce natin or na-convert natin into ibuprofen. No? Um, principle 10, konti na lang, <laughs> uh, design for degradation. No? So, chemical products should be designed. No? So, at the end of their function, they break down into their innocuous degradation products and do not persist in the environment. Okay, so what uh, my example here are surfactants. So it's Sabado, typically Labada day, no? So uh, surfactants are uh, no, are uh, raw materials used for um, detergents. No? I I hello. My uh, one uh, one audience uh, uses yeah. wala pong audio. Yeah. I think sa ano po paki-check lang po dun sa uh, audio options nyo kasi meron po diyang pag nag uh, join kayo sa Zoom is uh, okay. my option for join uh, using webinar audio. But okay. we can hear you clearly. Ah, okay, okay. Yep. Sige. Okay na. Well, wala, wala akong makita dito. I think it's Switch on her end. Audio. Ah, alright. Yeah, I all think right. it's on her end. Yep. Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Okay. So, yun. Going back, so, Labada Day. <laughs> Labada Day today. <laughs> so, we are dealing with surfactant. So, um... Kaya nagiging mabula yung detergents natin, it's because of um, surfactants. So, before, uh, well, it, itong mga nasa kaliwa, these are the, ano, the surfactants used in deter, uh, detergents, as in sabong panlaba. No? Um, old school formulations, detergent formulas, formulations use this um, TPPS, no? or tetrapropylene benzene sulfonate. Um, dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, ang tawag natin ay BABS no? or branch alkyl benzene sulfonates. No? So, um, yes, mabula. No? Pero ang naging issue nila with, um, with TPPS or uh, BABS, um, hindi na wala yung bula. Tapos na maglaba. No? Um, 
mabula pa rin yung tubig, no? Even um like for example, syempre i-dispose na naman natin yung wash water natin, no? And it it, it ends it ends up sa mga waterways natin saka sa mga ano sa streams. Pero bumabalik pagbalik sa atin no, sa halip na fresh water, in pa rin may bula pa din. So it shows us that hindi biodegradable or hindi na degrade no yung TPPS or yung uh, BABS. So Um, kaya nagkaroon ng move no with, uh, with the development of uh, LAS or yung tinatawag naman natin dito sa atin sa Pilipinas na labs. Kung meron sa it, kung meron dito mga nagtitimpla ng sabon, no? So I suppose um, you're familiar with this, yung labs, no? So um, linear alkyl uh, linear alkyl benzene sulfonates, no, has better um, degradation, no? So uh, mas madali because of the lesser ano, lesser branch uh, branching, no? So it it's uh, it can be easily uh, degradable, easily degraded compared to the ano to the branch one, no? So kaya well, even in, dito sa Pilipinas, so well, pinaka common pa rin yung labs, no? Pero there are also other surfactants, no, which uh, we refer to as CFAS, cocoa fatty alcohol sul, uh, sulfates or, or sulfonates. Um they are also made up of linear um linear uh, uh, chains, no, linear hydrophobic chains, no, which is um well pinopromote natin sa Pilipinas kasi um una degradable and at the same time it is sourced from cocoa uh, coconut, no. So um cocoa based uh, surfactants siya, no. Um so that that's for the detergents no so kaya labs na yung ginagamit ngayon i suppose wala naman ang gumagamit ng uh, ng branch kung meron man ako lagot sila <laughs> bawal na yan um so after laba doon naman tayo sa banlaw these two molecules are ingredients of fabric conditioners or fabric softeners no so after maglaba after magsabon banlaw naman natin dagdag tayo ng downy <laughs> ng fabcon so so originally um ang ginagamit na active material for fabcon is the DHT DMAC no so this this molecule pero when it's tested for biodegradability it's mababa it's 0 to 5% only no so um because of this uh, issue and degradation kasi nga if you are going to observe green chemistry principle then so, so dapat yung mga produkto natin mas ina, mainam na eventually magde-degrade siya after natin maglaba no after natin magbanlaw so they come up with another molecule which is the DMAC so diethyl ester dimethyl ammonium chloride so um it contains now hydrolyzable groups no more hydrolyzable groups and so the biodegradability is improved no so 0 to 5% it's now 76% no so um kaya if you halimbawa kung makikita niya sa mga ads no or sa commercial na kasi uh, new and reformulated daw yung kanilang um um fabco no so might as well one one of the possibilities is they have transitioned no from DHT DMAC to um DMAC Okay. So yon. So next is principle 11. So real time analysis for pollution prevention. So so far we have been dealing about synthesis, we have been dealing about in a product uh, product and process development, but what about the analytical method methodologies, no? So yung testing, no? So analytical methodologies um need to be further developed to allow for real time in process monitoring and control prior to the formation of hazardous substances. Um in analytical methods naman um we have two major and crucial steps, no? First is the sample pretreatment, no? So sample preparation generally. So that involves extraction no, from the matrix and then uh, separate uh, separation as well as um, chemical modification. And then afterwards, once we have prepared the sample, there uh, there comes naman the signal acquisition. So basically, ito na yung sasalang na natin siya sa instrument, that I treat na natin, no? So um, I can think of um, two um methods no that can be considered green no and they mostly focus on sa um pretreatment part or pretreatment stage no um first is yung mga assisted extractions no uh, many studies now i, I suppose may, i have colleagues in Ad, uh, adamson in chemdep that have done this assisted extraction which uses ultrasound or yung mga uh, 
um, ultrasonicators as well as microwave assisted as in the micro siya subject nila sa ano uh, microwave um, para lesser solvent no so um, kasi the vibrations no can also um, um, be useful no for the ano, sample pretreatment and another one is yung solid phase um, micro extraction or SPME so with SPME um, hindi tayo gumagamit or kung gumagamit man na solvent sobrang konti lang no so at least address doon um, it's still an analytical method but at the same time it addresses several things such as use of um, uh, fewer reagents fewer solvents no and then uh, principle 12 no so um yan huli na so inherently safe for chemistry for accident prevention so Substances and the form of a substance using chemical process should be chosen to meet, minimize the potential for chemical accidents, including releases, explosions, and fires. So, um, it's ano eh, uh, maraming, maraming aspects involved. Pwedeng, um, we should consider yung occupational safety and also yun nga, yung mga gamit, yung gagamitin natin and also the reaction conditions. Dapat all of these... Um, pag pinagsama-sama natin itong mga aspects na to, we should um, be able to come up with a chemical process with a product that, you know, that is malayo sa, ano, sa uh, pagkakaroon ng accidents. No? Basically, a safer, ano, safer uh, process. Um, so, I'll just go back no, to the, ano, the lipase catalyzed epoxidation and Bayer Villager oxidation. Um, nabanggit na rin naman natin kanina no, kung gaano ka... Um, gaano ka stricto sa ano sa handling no si um, per acids no so with the use of lipase so we are doing the temp the reaction at um, ambient temperature um, we do not need to store or to handle uh, to handle um, uh, large quantities of per acid kasi the uh, no, the per acids will just be prepared in situ or on um dun sa pot no by our lipase so so at least dito we avoid no the ano the risks involved no of handling per acids no yung explosions the flammability also accidental um release of vapors no ayun so kumbaga isipin natin um uh, i-design mag design uh, ensure natin na yung um ke, um yung processes natin will not be ano ba will not cause accident wala nang bopal part 2 no and uh, so on um regulatory and voluntary endeavor. So, ano na ba yung mga movement no para maipakalat itong um, green chemistry na to. So far dito sa Pilipinas I haven't um I haven't um encountered no as uh, a specific organization or um initiative no. Pero so far we have dito sa Pilipinas no, when I was working in the industry, um na encounter ko na to yung responsible care no which is um um initiative voluntary initiative um um participated no by chemical industries here in the Philippines some chemical industries no so well initiatives so unang una is yung mga uh, spearheaded by the US EPA no or the uh, green chemistry program which are the presidential green chemistry challenge awards and then uh, also part of the EPA is yung safer choice labeling uh, the DFE or the design for environment the REACH regulation, which is the ano, the food and drug regulations in European Union, the EU Eco Label, and yung RC. No, so from the name itself, uh, Presidential Green Chemistry Challenge Award. So it's actually an annual um, um, awards that recognizes chemical technologies that incorporate green chem principles into chemical design, manufacture, and use. Actually, may awards na sila for 2021. And um, if um, I've obtained this from the uh, the website of EPA, no, so sila sila na yung mga winners. Actually, for um, the GCCA, um, they have five categories. No, well, this one, yes, five categories: um, greener synthetic pathways, greener reaction, and green design for greener chemicals. So these first three are. Uh, first three uh, focus areas or categories are awarded no to industries no or uh, chemical uh, manufacturers while for um yung fourth category which is small business basically um ano pa rin? Uh, it's a small business no that um was able to come up with any of this um three uh, first three categories halimbawa 
uh, a small business was able to achieve a greener, uh, come up with a greener synthetic pathway. So award, uh, pwede sila manalan ng award na yun. And yung fifth naman is academic. So basically academic setting. No? So yung mga ano, academic, uh, yung mga research labs, no they're able to come up with a uh, greener chemical or kaya greener reaction conditions. No? So they can also be eligible for the um, PGCCA. Um, next are yung mga labeling ano naman siya, uh, labeling initiatives no so um, in the US we have the safer choice labeling okay naman in terms of ingredients so we have they have the safer chemicals ingredients list or the SCIL and then for the EU naman they have uh, eco label so these um, initiatives naman um, these are basically yung uh, pag-award ng label or certification. Kung baga parang pwede nilang ipaskill sa mga documents nila or sa labas ng building nila that they have this um, safer choice label. Okay, naman they have the eco label. Okay, pwede nilang ipaskill yun sa mga uh, sa mga packaging uh, sa packaging ng mga produkto nila. So basically, they have the um, this label or certification is awarded to products or ingredients that have met the te- threshold toxicological criteria. So basically, i-assess mo na yung produkto. How much um how much um yung present na active ingredient or any ingredient of concern and then they will have to comp- uh, assess kung yun bang uh, quantity ng ingredient na yun is below um the toxicological criteria meaning uh, acute mammalian toxicity, genotoxicity and many others. Um another naman um is yung DFE or Design for Environment uh, which is also from the US EPA. Then we have the REACH regulations of EU. And then we also have responsible care. Init- uh, initially, the RC was um, established in Canada, no, pero ayun, it's now a global initiative. So for DFE, for REACH and responsible care, it's actually it actually involves a series of assessments. So assessment of products, of ingredients, even the systems, no? Um, sa manufacturing or sa um, paghandle ng produkto. Um, assessments in terms of hazard assessment and LCAs or life cycle assessment in order to identify and evaluate whether um, the materials that they use or the products that they produce or their process no, are safe according to the uh, set standards of this DFE, REACH, o kaya naman RC. No? Um, so we're moving towards the end. No? So what about challenges and future perspectives? So marami sa mga, ano, marami, marami sa mga na, na-discuss ko kanina um, our research article. So basically, um, nasa lab pa. Um, hindi pa talaga totally adopted by uh, industrial scale. Um, ionic liquids, for instance, well, ginagamit na sila in some um, chemical companies such as BASF. Pero, I mean, hindi pa ganun kalaki no, yung volume. No? As in, they, they're not using ILs, in ionic liquids at, uh, at larger scale. No? So, kumbaga, nasa pilot pa lang, mga small batches pa lang. No? So, discovery of more environmentally benign technologies at the research stage does not actually guarantee adoption on an industrial scale. Kasi, of course, and dami consideration if you're going to scale it up presyo no cost yung mga cost no um oo safe pero what if we are going to escalate it to a larger scale safe pa rin ba no so kaya mahaba-habang proseso pa din malayo-layo yung takbuhin pa din and um development of cleaner st- uh, technologies can be costly no um mahal <laughs> di ba um also for those um, institutions or, or um, companies no, that are going to implement or going to develop cleaner te- technologies, ano naman yung magiging incentive nila? No? Kasi nga, mahal eh. So, on their end, ano yung pwedeng maging ROI nila? No? So, um, if, you know, if, green chemistry is actually a part of policy making no of of a uh, of a nation no perhaps they can develop let's say tax incentives no so para para maingaan niyo naman yung mga ano yung mga organizations yung institutions na ah okay let's adopt um a cleaner um cleaner process no which let's produce a cleaner uh, or greener product no kasi may ano naman um kumbaga may balik naman sa atin in terms of tax incentives o kaya naman if you're going for new products or uh, no processes of course yung patent uh, if kung patentable yung ano yung technology nila um they can have um extensions no patent life so pwedeng mas ma-hold nila nang mas matagal yung ano yung ownership dun sa technology na yon and in terms of uh, sa 
sa acad uh, sa academic uh, setting no um integration of the philosophy and practice of green chemistry to students of all levels um dito sa atin kasi sa Pilipinas medyo bago pa ang konsepto na to eh, ng ano uh, ng green chem oo we are aware no kasi may and by uh, in a way in um uh, exposed naman tayo sa and by size sa and by chem no pero yung sabihin talaga natin na green chemistry um medyo bago pa siya sa atin no so it's it would be nice no na um perhaps in the future no we come up with um if we're going to study chemical reactions if we're going to study stoichiometry perhaps we can also incorporate um green metrics no ngayon parang ah, siguro siguro kung ako magtuturo ng n by chem or ng ah, ng gen chem no parang yung mga bata <laughs> yung mga bata ma'am di naman po yan naturo sa amin na senior high no tas oh, kaya naman paano ba yan kasi um um parang syempre we are introducing concepts no pero at the same time it would be nice then no in the future no that they um they will be um incorporated na din no para at least no when they go or, or when they progress no to ano to higher years so kaya naman to graduate school um kumbaga na imbibe na sa kanila no yung um prinsipyo no or yung uh, konsepto ng green um chemistry so if you're uh, interested no to learn more about uh, about Uh, green chemistry you no know? so these are the suggested readings well some of the some of the items that i have discussed here you no know, were also um obtained you no know, from these uh, sources um this one is the website you no know, of the US EPA you no know, um specifically yung green chemistry uh, section ng uh, US EPA website and then a lot um well the fathers of green chemistry Paul Anastas um Roger Sheldon um John Warner also Martin Polyakov no they have a lot of um publications no about green chemistry so um i hope that um you have enjoyed no this presentation no and uh, thank you very much again for this opportunity to share no this um topic no thank you very yeah. much ma'am ayan thank so you. we surely did we surely did enjoy your your um uh, presentation this morning and uh, ayun nga po parang ma malayo pa yung tatakbuhin uh -oh. ng uh, policies regarding uh, green chemistry but uh, i mean uh, ito itong through this webinar we can just like increase the the public awareness about the uh, green chemistry um ma'am i i just wa wanna uh, put you on hold for now you can rest <laughs> i'm just gonna share some uh, uh, some slides uh, regarding our um, um, current activities Uh, let me just. Alright. Inum ka muna ng tubig, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Sige. Yes. Wait. Mm -hmm. So we just want to share some uh, uh, slides regarding our current activities. Uh, so next week, uh, we have uh, another webinar uh, under the Phil I Have Ed uh, program. Uh, this is. Uh, part of the STEM teaching webinar series. And uh, this is about practical and innovative STEM teaching uh, featuring uh, Professor Michelle Lansigan from the American University and uh, Professor Dindi Voiles uh, from the Louisiana State University. So uh, next week po yan, um, Saturday, June 26 at uh, 10 a.m. Okay. And then uh, ito po, uh, kalolunch lang po na parang program or pakulo ng Phil Sci Hub is the Phil Hub TGIF. This is our um, uh, Facebook live sessions uh, every Friday. And uh, ayun po, parang uh, magsasuggest lang po kami ng topics uh, to talk about na pwede po tayong uh, makichime in and uh, join the discussion. So uh, ano po ito? Parang very informal lang. Uh, this is just our official uh, FB live session every Friday, Phil Hub TGIF. Okay? And uh, At the end of this webinar, we're gonna uh, uh, promote or uh, premiere uh, the first episode of uh, Agrikaba. This is our uh, first, well, uh, sort of TV program uh, featuring uh, Professor uh, Chester Dabalos uh, about agriculture and anything about agriculture gardening. So uh, we will premiere uh, the first episode at the end of this webinar. You are free to go at any point. Uh, so ayun lang po, parang uh, uh, just uh, a signal boost for this uh, TV program. 
by Sir Chester Dabalo. So um, I'd like to uh, head straight to the uh, questions uh, by our Zoom and the YouTube participants uh, for, this, uh, for this webinar. So let me um, start with, uh, ayun nga po, parang na, na mention na ni, ni Ma'am yung uh, current status ng green chemistry uh, here in the Philippines. And Ma'am Raquel Bernal is uh, from Zoom, is asking about uh, uh, some current programs or existing projects about green chemistry in the Philippines. Um, okay, you comment? Well, ah, yes, hello. Ayun. Yes, So, um, I'm not sure, no, if, um, if let's say, DNR or, or DOST has existing um, projects. I suppose these are, ano naman, these are, um, these are integrated, no? Pero let's say, yung talagang kiniklaim natin na specifically about green chemistry or talaga yeah. yung malakihang, malawakang project na hindi ko pa sure kung meron. Mm -hmm. Pero, for example, I have colleagues no with in Adamson they are doing um catalysis no um they're the stud uh the studying catalyst and also yung mga assisted methods no which are actually um observing mm -hmm. green chemistry pero yung talagang sabihin natin major the national project, level no, mm -hmm. on national level no so parang Apo. wala pa ako gaano mm -hmm. um na encounter <laughs> yeah kasi yung mga programs na na mention niyo po kanina like the US EPA parang mostly mm -hmm. initiatives of uh, mm -hmm. regional regional groups pero yes. yung in terms of uh, like really official regulations and policies wala pa po talaga so uh, 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 uh. ayun kailangan talaga natin siyang i-promote uh, pa <laughs> for uh, uh, extra push okay uh, actually dito sa Pilipinas kasi ano naman um um marami naman nagko-conduct ng NatPrad na research no national products mm -hmm. pero kasi the thing is um with not of uh, yes they are we are dealing with products available in nature no pero we cannot vouch na they are completely ano na um complete we can say we cannot say na talagang green chemistry agad siya kasi for example if they are using um solvents many solvents chlorinated solvents no so medyo ano din siya medyo hindi pa ganun ka, mm -hmm. ka nag-adhere din sa green chem principle yeah so uh, another question from uh, from YouTube from uh, Manolita White uh, ano daw po ba yung difference between uh, environmental chemistry and green chemistry? Ah okay. Well, I I yeah. have ano no, I have introduced it um earlier mm -hmm. no. Um and by when we when we say and by chem, so it actually deals with no the ano the interaction no as well as the effect no of um materials different chem, uh, chemicals no to the environment no uh, anong effect niya sa tubig, anong epekto niya sa lupa, sa hangin no. Um, yun nga, tas na-differentiate ko rin na yung waste management naman or environmental remediation which is um which is addressing the pollution na present na green chem naman on the other hand. Ang concern natin dito is dapat bago natin i-produce itong chemical na to or itong proseso na to, dapat we are aware na how will it end up in the environment or hopefully it won't end up mm -hmm. no for long sa environment. Mm -hmm. Yun. So, may, more on sa ano siya eh, design, uh, designing uh, products and processes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I have here a question from Zoom from uh, Gerald. I don't know if he's around or he wants to ask this question live. Uh, okay. Gerald from UPOU, are you around here? Yes, Pa. <laughs> uh, would you like to Hello. ask your question live? Uh, okay, sige. Um, Professor Maya Katrina, um, I'm working po as a pharmaceutical chemist um, dito mm -hmm. po sa Laguna and okay. curious <laughs> po ako dun sa presentation niya regarding dun sa um, yung sa ano nga ba yun? Sa part 1 ba yung green chemistry? Uh, factor po regarding dun sa mm -hmm. kasi yung pharmaceutical company yung may pinakamalaking e-factor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm curious po ako how does uh, these active pharmaceutical ingredients became a uh, destructive in environment po. Actually it, it's not it's not the uh, it's not the API per se no that causes the ano that causes the high E factor but rather pa, kung paano pinoproduce yung API no kasi of course you have to ano you have to um it will undergo several uh, extraction methods no so um processing methods basically no so you will use a lot of solvents 
no para pang, pang purify de ba uh, um, gagamit ka ng marami solvents gagamit ka ng mga um, um, separating agents gagamit ka ng maraming drying agents no so yun yung yun yung actually nakakapagpataas no sa ano sa uh, sa e factor and at the same time hindi lahat naman ng isomers ng API therapeutic eh, di ba? So dapat ira- kailangan mo pang i-resolve 'yon. Halimbawa, just on- only one isomer is um only one isomer yung therapeutic. No, so what if you are producing a mixture of different isomers? So you have to separate also you have to uh, you have to separate yung ibang isomers and you'll just ka- have to come up with ano uh, with um yung desired product natin or desired uh, desired isomer. Eh syempre, kung nagproduce ka pa ng ibang isomer, added waste din 'yon. So nakakadagdag din 'yon sa ano, sa E factor, no? So so 'yon. It's not actually 'yun nga. It's not actually the API, no, that causes the high E factor. Pero ano yung mga ginamit para mag-arrive dun sa production ng API? Totoo pa. I agree on that. <laughs> Thank you pa. Mm-mm. Okay. Thank you Gerald for your question. And uh, I'll probably Uh, there, cause, because there are still um, a lot of questions and uh, 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 our speaker has to run. <laughs> so, uh, so parang magkakaroon na lang po tayo ng uh, uh, parang follow-up, like uh, probably few slides where we can uh, send the uh, um, professor uh, they pass uh, our yes. questions. Para, uh, Susulatan para natin sila ng sagot. Oo, oh, oh. pwede <laughs> post na lang natin sa YouTube, ah, sa, sa mm-hmm. Facebook. Para po masagot sila lahat. I just want to uh, ask one last question because um uh, dito po sa session natin uh, there there are many educators are uh, present t- mm-hmm. today and um, they are um asking from some uh, uh, general topics for uh, uh, high school STEM mm-hmm. uh, research projects about green chemistry. Kasi nabanggit niyo po you have uh, students under you and you're also yourself uh, an educator so. Mm-hmm. Ano po yung Mm-mm. parang on a high school level like potential topics for for green chemistry? Um they can have ano eh, well from um, ang naiisip ko dito is yun na yung for example yung alternative solvents, no? Mm-hmm. Um minsan um part also of the ano, part also of um green um green chemical process um green chemistry project is also yung um aside from using alternative solvents, solventless condition No so if you can if you can come uh, if you can come up with reactions that will not need um a solvent that is actually uh consider, can can be considered a green chemistry project um another one is yung assisted extraction so you i have mentioned about yung mga microwave assisted mm-hmm. um microwave oven <laughs> yeah. it it won't need uh, ano it won't um it there are there are extractions that you you know you can just um so put in a microwave oven and then of course there will be solvents no pero solvents in a way that um instead of using um chlorinated solvents or uh, uh, alcohols you can use water no tapos mm-hmm. i- sa subject mo sa microwave so that is actually a- considered a microwave assisted ano na um well that, um on my end naman sa students ko um ano kasi sila eh, um kasi with the limitations of a face to face setting no so so um isa actually yung mga products uh, project nila kung sila ay natuloy sa ano sa lab uh, sa lab setting um actually they will also um do biomass extraction no kasi before i did extraction of poly, uh, phenolic compounds from um yung sapal ng kape yung pinaglagaan uh, mm. coffee grounds okay. no um well my students uh, i have a student who will focus naman on black tea yung pinag ano yung pinagbabara na tea bag no mm-hmm. kasi syempre meron pa rin yung uh, phenolic compounds eh mm-hmm. uh, the other one naman will work on the other one naman will work on cocoa beans no the ano um yung pinagtalupan naman ng cocoa beans no bago siya isangag or bago siya gawing um um gamitin for cocoa chocolate production no so ano din yon rich in uh, phenolic compounds din yon no so actually if, uh, kahit anong Uh, peels for example mga pinagbalatan ng prutas pinagbalatan mm-hmm. ng gulay they can be ano um, they can um, derive biomolecules there um, phenolic compounds uh, proteins and so on no? and they yeah. can extract that using um, water o kaya naman assisted or microwave extraction mm-hmm. yeah biomass is really like a, a treasure trove of uh, 
uh, like designer chemicals oh, oh. Then. Yan. may pera sa basura <laughs> may pera sa basura definitely oh, oh. okay so ayan po with that uh, I would like to conclude uh, our um, discussion um, so uh, we took note of all of your questions so yung iba po ma- medyo uh, very specific so uh, we, we put it on hold for now so maraming maraming salamat po uh, sa inyong mga questions and at this point I'd like to present um, our Certificate of Appreciation to our uh, um, resource speaker. Uh, this Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to uh, Professor Maria Katrina Vasquez de Paz of the Department of Chemistry, College of Sciences at Adamson University for delivering the webinar Green Chemistry Principles and Initiatives organized by the Filipino Science Hub and held via Zoom and YouTube Live on the 19th day of June 2021. Birthday nga pala po ni uh, Jose Rizal today. So, happy birthday, oh, uh, Doc. <laughs> so, this, Doc this Pepe. signed, Doc Pepe, <laughs> uh, signed at uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bunkin, uh, CEO and founder, Filipino Science Hub, and yours truly, uh, JP Onya, Head of Research, Filipino Science Hub. So, in behalf of uh, uh, us at uh, Filipino Science Hub and uh, all of the participants here on uh, Zoom and uh, YouTube, we give very big thanks to uh, uh, Professor Maria Katrina Vasquez de Paz for being our res- resource speaker for this morning. So maraming maraming salamat ma'am and uh, na- napaunlakan nyo kami for this yeah. uh, webinar. Thank you din. Thank Ayan, you, thank just... you so much. <laughs> Long time coming na po ito ma'am. Eh, no? Nakikita. Oo nga. Si ma'am ay very avid support- supporter ng Pills I have from the from the Uh-oh. since day one so talagang we're looking forward talaga for this uh, webinar uh, ang hirap ito, magturo online no so kaya ang laking tulong ng pills I have no exactly. yung mga materials ninyo ayan, ayan thank so, you din so much <laughs> thank, thank you. you so ito po i'm uh, posting the link now for the uh, certificates of participation so we just like to uh, make note that uh, Uh, yung pong uh, certificates natin are uh, issued in batch and uh, kung hindi po kayo nakapag-fill up nung uh, evaluation form then expect no no certificate okay so you have to uh, fill in the the Google form for the certificate kasi doon po nakalagay yung uh, email address nyo and uh, um, speaking of uh, email addresses kindly check and double check your email addresses kasi kung mali po yung email address magba-bounce back lang po sa amin yung yung uh, email for the certificate. So kindly check and uh, ayun po, allow us seven days to generate all the all the certificates and issue it back to you before uh, following up uh, regarding your your certificates. Okay? So ayan, maraming maraming salamat po and at this point um uh I won't hold the uh Professor Kat for uh for this uh, part. So ayun po ipi-premiere po namin yung uh, episode 1 of Agricaba <laughs> featuring uh Professor Chester Dabalos from from Hawaii, all the way from Hawaii and uh, uh he will talk about agriculture, everything agriculture. Okay? So ito, I'm just gonna just share my screen. Nakikita niyo ba yung screen ko? Yes, kuya. Ayan, okay. Yes. Ah, wait. I forgot to... I forgot to share the the audio. <laughs> Sorry. So, Ma'am Kat, I won't hold you any further. So, maraming maraming salamat po. And, uh, <laughs> Thank we'll you, see you, We'll see you in the chat. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me share this quickly. Can you hear anything? Yeah? Kuya. Naka, ah, naka naka mute. Mute. Uh-oh. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Sa ibang nga daw yuwami. Ako po ay si Dr. Chester Damados, isang agricultural chemist. Magkakasama po tayo sa pag-uklas ng ibang-ibang uri ng yamang agrikultura. Halina't matuto at mag-investiga sa palatuntunang Agrikaba!
buhay. Bilang panimulang handog, pag-uusapan po natin ang isang ulam na paborito ng Pilipino. Ito ang pinakbet. Ang pinakbet ay kadalasang niluluto kasama ang bagnet. Ito po yung bagnet. Pag-uusapan po natin ngayon ng apat na gulay ng pinakbet. Ito ang kamatis, ang palaya, talong, Kuya, pa, ah, ito, hindi namin pakita yung video. Can you see it now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ang matis ay sa phytochemical ng lycopene. Ano nga ba itong phytochemical na ito? Ang phytochemical ay general term para i-describe ang mga chemicals na galing sa halaman. At kung may extra nutritional benefits ang phytochemical, tinatagura yung itong nutraceutical by the word nutrient plus pharmaceutical. Kaya hindi po totoo na lahat ng chemicals ay masama sa kalusugan. Ang lycopene ay tumutulong sa pag-iwas ng prostate cancer na common sa mga kalalakihan. Para i-increase ang bioavailability ng lycopene, ang kamatis ay kailangan igisa sa mantika o kung hindi naman, kumamit tayo ng tomato sauce sa mga pagulitin nating ulam katulad ng pochero. Ang kamatis ay hindi lamang pampakinis ng kutis, pero tumutulong ito sa pag-iwas ng prostate cancer. Ang kamatis ay isang uri ng decumbent vine. Para tumubo ng pataas ang kamatis, kailangan natin may support. Pupwede rin natin, pupwede rin natin itali ang mga vines ng kamatis sa mga sanga o mga sticks. Ito po ang itsura ng bunga ng kamatis na isang berry. Ang bulaklak ng kamatis ay six-pointed yellow star. Ang mahalagang aspeto na dapat nyo malaman sa pagpapatubo ng kamatis ay ang water drainage. Kung hindi maganda ang water drainage, ang kamatis ay magiging bansot at sakitin. Napakapait ng ampalaya. Ang pait ng ampalaya ay gawa ng mga chemicals na tinatawag na alkaloids. Ang mga alkaloids ay may nitrogen sa kanilang chemical formula. Siguro narinig nyo na na ang ampalaya ay mabisa sa pag-iwas ng sakit na diabetes. Totoo po ito. Ang ampalaya ay sagana rin sa phytosterols. Ang mga phytosterols ay nakakapag-enhance ng insulin production kaya nakapagpababa ito ng blood sugar levels. Ito po ang ampalaya. Katulad ng kamatis, ang ampalaya ay isang uwi ng vine. Pero may special structure ang ampalaya. Ito ay ang tendrils. Ang tendrils ay tumutubo sa, sa dulo ng ampalaya at ito ay mga parang sinulit. Ginagamit ang tendrils para pumulupot ang vine sa mga sanga ng kahoy. Kung iyong pagmamasdan, hindi kayo makakakita ng ampalaya na pumupulupot sa kapwa niya ampalaya. Pumupulupot lamang ito sa mga, sa mga host katulad ng sanga na ito. Ang tawag sa fenomenon na ito ay chemotropism. Nagsesecrete ng chemical signals ang ampalaya para sabihin sa kapwa niya ampalaya na huwag pumulupot ang mga ito. Napaka-spongy ng talong. May mga air pockets po in between ng mga cells ng talong. Kaya pag nagluto po kayo ng talong, ito ay nagiging malapsak. Ang violet pigment ng talong ay gawa sa mga compounds na tinatawag na anthocyanins. Ang mga anthocyanins ay mabisang antioxidants din. Ano ang antioxidants? Ang antioxidants ay nagre-react sa mga free radicals na namatatagpuan sa polluted air. Sa halip na nagre-react ang mga free radicals sa mga healthy cells, sinasalba ito ng mga antioxidants. Sagana rin ang talong sa mga phenolic compounds. Ang indikasyon nito ay kung hiniwa mo ang talong, ito ay nagiging brown katulad ng mansanas. Marami pong iba't ibang variety ang talong. May mga talong tayo, 
na ginagamit para sa omelet or torta. May mga talong na ginagamit para sa inabraw. At ito po yung talong na ginagamit para sa pinakpet. So, pahaba po siya. Or sometimes, sinatawag ito na lady's finger. Ang itsura po ng, ng bulaklak ng talong ay six-pointed star din. Kung minsan ito po ay puti, kadalasan naman ito ay violet. Mag-ingat po tayo kung mamimitas tayo ng tulong kasi may mga varieties ng tulong ang may tinik. So, kailangan gumamit tayo ng gloves. Alam niyo ba kung bakit slimy ang okra? Ito ay gawa ng soluble fiber. Ang soluble fiber ay nakakatulong sa pag-iwas ng cardiovascular diseases. Ito rin ay mahalaga para sa mga microbial flora ng ating mga bituka para sa ating proper brain function. Sagana ang okra sa folic acid or vitamin B9. Ang vitamin B9 ay mahalaga sa mga tao ng dadala ng tao. Ang vitamin B9 ay kailangan para sa DNA synthesis at nagpreprevent ito ng birth defects. Ito po ang okra. Ang okra ay isa sa mga pinakamadaling ipropagate na gulay. Para palaguin ang okra, kailangan lang natin patuyuin ang mga mature pods nito at i-germinate natin yung mga seeds. Ang okra ay low maintenance din. Pupwede itong palakihin kasama ang mga damo. Ang mga gulay sa aming hardin ay uh, napatubo gamit ng organic gardening. Ano nga ba tong organic gardening na ito? Pag sinabi mong organic, hindi ka gumagamit ng mga pesticides. Kasi ang mga pesticides ay may mga side effects sa ating katawan. Ang mga nutrients sa lupa ay, ay hango sa tinatawag na process na composting. Ito ang pagbubulok ng mga, ng mga halaman uh, na katulad ng dahon at mga sanga-sanga. Ginagamit ito, ginagamit ang earthworms para ma-improve yung composting. Kung gusto mo rin madagdagan ng, uh, ng nutrients ang lupa, pwede ka rin maglagay ng mga pataba na galing sa dumi ng mga ruminants katulad ng kabayo o kalabaw. Salamat po sa pakikinig sa aming first episode. Now ay marami po kayo napulot na aral dito sa aming panimulang handog. Sama-sama po natin pagyamanin ang agrikultura dito sa Agrikaba! Po. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, that's Agrikaba, our very first online show uh, featuring uh, Professor Chester Dabalos from Hawaii. And ayun po, kita nyo naman, ano siya, uh, family project po siya. <laughs> Kasi ang cameraman po niya ay ang kanyang asawa, si Ma'am Jenny. <laughs> At ang nag-edit po ng video ay si Doc Jeff. So ayan, maraming maraming salamat po sa... Uh, Pagsama sa amin and uh, please don't forget uh, kung free po kayo sa Friday lunch around lunch time uh, kindly join us for uh, uh, Phil's I have TGIF so uh, if finalize pa po namin yung topic but it's a free flowing conversation and you can chime in anytime uh, dun sa uh, Facebook live so we're all very excited to 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 meet you and uh, parang online kumustahan lang po natin to for for Phil's I have Uh, TGIF. Uh, TGIF uh, stands for uh, ano nga ba? Uh, trivia, trivia, good vibes, uh, information, and uh, fun facts. Yeah, TGIF. Okay. So ayun po. Maraming maraming salamat po for our uh, Zoom participants. Uh, may you have a very nice weekend. Have uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, also our uh, YouTube participants. So maraming maraming salamat po uh, for 
uh, staying staying with us and uh, uh, sticking around for the past two and a half two and a half hours. So thank you very much. Ah, uh, yung pung um, uh, link for the Google form I posted in po dun sa video description and probably I just gonna post it also in the comment section para makita po after the after the webinar. So thank you, thank you very much. I'm gonna uh, stop the the sharing for now and we'll see you next week again for another webinar uh, on the on the STEM teaching webinar uh, practically innovative uh, STEM teaching okay so thank you very much see you all next week oh wait I should stop streaming first